Paterno, who today could pass Paul Bryant as the winningest coach in the history of bowl games. They're tied at 15. He's had one undefeated team in each of the last four decades. Think about it, the last four decades. That's longevity and quality. Rich Brooks has been at Oregon for 18 seasons. This is his first Rose Bowl, though he's been to four bowls in the last half dozen years. Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan with Keith Jackson here at the 81st Rose Bowl game. Penn State, will they come out today as the other undefeated team and let go all barrels in an effort to impress the pollsters with this footnote that no team holding first place that won a postseason game has ever been voted out of first place. Brett Conway will kick off for Penn State. Oregon will return it with Ricky Whittle and Herman O'Berry. The temperature is just under 70 degrees. The field condition is perfect. It's a gorgeous day in Pasadena. The officials today are out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Courtney Mosey is the referee. And Brett Conway now ready. Penn State was here in 1923. Oregon was last here in 1958. It's Ricky Whittle from the eight. And he comes back to about the 18. There the Oregon Ducks will put it into play. Danny O'Neill, in his career at Oregon, had a huge season last year, a little less this year, but the team was more successful this year as he has thrown the ball for more than 7,000 yards. Opening behind him in the backfield will be Dwayne Jones at fullback and Ricky Whittle, number 14, at tailback. And they will play a lot of tailbacks today. Morgan will send Ricketts number three wide along with Kristen McLemore. Josh Wilcox, the tight end, also flexes out. Here's your first snap of the day. Penalty flags thrown. They try to bring it inside with McLemore. He picks up a couple of yards, but let's see about the flag. It'll be offsides against Penn State. So there is some anxiety running through the minds and souls of these youngsters. The offensive backs and receivers for Oregon, McLemore, number one, is a key man. More often than not, the hot man. He is a little guy at about 185 pounds, but he will go down the middle with it. And the idea for all these wideouts for Oregon, first you catch the ball and then you run with it. So they effectively become running backs once they have the ball. So the offsides penalty against the Nittany Lions gives Oregon a first and five up at the 24. And this is Whittle, 193-pound junior out of Fresno, California, getting just across the 25. Now these are the people that will tell the story of Oregon's fortunes today. The offensive front, Bob Greasy, they got to give Danny O'Neill enough time. Four new starters in that offensive line from last year. Three of them are sophomores. They've had a lot of injuries in that group, and they have allowed a lot of sacks. Penn State sacks the quarterback very well, and you are right. They must play well for Oregon to have a chance. Second down and three. It is O'Neill looking to the right. He's got double wide there. They stay with the run. They go to Whittle. He's caught by the ankle. He can't break loose from Willie Smith, and he is taken down after about a yard pickup. So it's a sticky wicket in the middle against this defensive bunch, and Willie Smith, who just made that last tackle, I think will have a big day today because he has grown this year, I think, into a terrific football player. In the secondary, Bob, there's a new man. Penzenick starts at free safety. Dingle and Doring, uh, Herring and Dingle both out. There's a look at Penzenick. His first career start is the Rose Bowl. Third down, first pass thrown wide to the left side to Dameron Ricketts, and Ricketts goes up. One hands that thing and brings it down. Wasn't a good throw by O'Neill, but what Oregon needs to do on offense is come out and make first downs and control the football, keep it away from Penn State and that high-scoring offense. It is just enough for the first, put it up on the 34-yard line, and Danny O'Neill is probably pumped, wouldn't you say, at this point. That's Whittle bouncing over the right side, finding a little daylight, a penalty flag thrown here, and I think you've got possibly a holding call coming up. And if it
it is holding it's probably against Oregon there's the holding and it is against Oregon and let's check in with Lynn Swan. Thank you very much Keith you know let's try and put that Nebraska Miami uh, in perspective for both these teams well I talked to the kids from Penn State they were a little disappointed a little depressed not that bad Joe Paternal stressed to these guys it's the, the outcome of their season is up to them they can't depend on anybody else that he felt they would not be down well, I can tell you when you watch a game like that you watch all the way through the fourth quarter you think what you want is going to happen Miami's going to upset them and they don't you are a little down if they can get it under control they'll be okay on the Oregon side they said they don't think they can nickel and dime the Penn State team what they want to do move the ball and look for the big play to get some points on the scoreboard Keith? that was a 12 yard penalty against Oregon it moves it back and makes it a first and 22. Because holding is a penalty from the spot to the O'Neill's pass down the middle. Caught by Josh Wilcox, the tight end. This time O'Neill was on the money to his tight end right in the heart of the field, and he is close to a first down. Well, what Lynn said was they need some big plays, and O'Neill is the guy that has to give it. They've got some speed at the wide receivers, and Wilcox, the tight end, is going to have single coverage a lot during the day. That's a big throw for O'Neill and a big catch for uh, Wilcox. Josh, uh, daddy was Dave Wilcox, who's one of the great ones in San Francisco 49er history. Played the same position. Yep. Played for Lynn Casanova. And that 58 team that played Ohio State here, and we've got another penalty flag. So the boards from the ACC brought the laundry with them, didn't they? Courtney Mosey with the call. Dead ball. Delay of the game. Offense. Five so yards. Dawson is the umpire. Michael Sample is the head linesman. Richie Williams, the field judge. Williamson. John Gutbold, the line judge. Dan Hogue, the side judge. And Tommy Hunt is the back judge. So the Ducks now absorbing their second penalty. They'll be looking at second down and six, having almost picked up the first down on first and 22. Neil back, short drop, quick pass. Bring it back into the middle, into the traffic, and there's the first down. Caught by Denver and Ricketts. Ricketts is 5'9", 177, sophomore out of Culver City, California. Ricketts led the team in receptions this year with 36. Oregon needs to hit the hit the uh, the game going on all cylinders. They want to take some offensive plays that are sound, but they also want to try big plays, wide open, throw the ball all over the field. They're not going to leave anything in their bag of tricks. On the 49, first down for the Ducks as they near midfield. Penn State offense is yet to see the ball. This is Whittle. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage, but shakes off the tackler and gets it across midfield to the Penn State 48-yard line. He got away from Flint Holes, the strong safety. Brian Miller on the tackle. Holes is going to be 13, and it's just a good job by the running back to avoid the tackle. Poor tackling by the defense. And the Ducks have what they want, and that is some kind of a drive to open the ball game to get some confidence going for their side. Second down and eight. Ball on the Nittany Lions, 48-yard line. O'Neill down the middle. Pass is underthrown. Josh Wilcox was breaking free. If O'Neill had had a little deeper drop, he might well have had six points in his pocket. I think the other thing, too, Keith, is O'Neill thought that Wilcox was open when he threw it and that Wilcox wasn't looking at the right time. There's an old quarterback. Played behind knows Terry exactly. Baker yeah. at Oregon yes, State. Did. Rick says he played the defense and Terry played the offense. Back in the old, when they couldn't substitute many guys. Right? Uh -huh. Third down and seven. thrown by O'Neill, intended for Ricky Whittle. What they do is send their tailback out in motion and then bring him back almost on a wide receiver, wide receiver screen like that. And O'Neill did not throw it well. 
year, averaging just under 40 yards per punt. He's been busy, too. He's uh, yes, he had 77 punts. Get some air under it. And Archie calls for a fair catch at the 16-yard line, where it'll be first down for the mighty Penn State offense coming up next. It has a 16-valve ZTEC engine that delivers the best highway fuel economy in its class. A Micron air filter to remove dust and pollen, as well as 14 other features not found on any other car in its class. Introducing the all-new Mercury Mystique. When we created this car, we pulled out all the stops. The all-new Mystique. It's a whole new Mercury. Super Bowl, here we come. Excuse me? We're driving to Miami. Let's go, Carpool Pal. I don't think Mrs. Carpool Pal is going to be too keen on that idea. What are you talking about? I got everything we need. Can't do it. Giant football luggage rack. Yeah, but she's going to. McDonald's 95 cent Big Macs. Nice. 95 cent Big Mac. Mmm, do all be fatties. Get the sauce, lettuce, cheese. Super Bowl. Uh -huh. Back in a minute, honey. Break in 95 with McDonald's 95 cent Big Mac. A double stack Big Mac or morning fresh egg McMuffin for just 95 cents. 95 cent Big Mac to take us to the Super Bowl. Who say anything about tickets? Only through January, so hurry. Mm -hmm. At this special time of year, the Century 21 family joins all families everywhere in a warm celebration of those special places in the heart we all call home. for this 1995 Tournament of Roses, Chichi Rodriguez. Yes, that's the one and only. The Queen, Alia Hawk, 17-year-old senior, Poly High School in Pasadena. And Chichi flipped the coin, Penn State won, deferred to accept the ball to start the second half. And right now, we're about to see what a lot of folks bought tickets for. The Penn State offense against the Oregon defense. The ball is at the 16-yard line. It is first down for the Lions with Milne and Kajana Carter lined up in the backfield. Brady Scott is the man in motion. Here's Carter. And breaks it. He's gone. Goodbye. It'll be touchdown Penn State. First play of the ball game. It goes into the books as 83 yards. They had him, they fought, and then he was gone. I was going to tell you he's explosive, but you can see that. He breaks a tackle of O'Berry, number four, right in the hole, right here. He breaks the tackle. Everybody else has got a man in their face, and he is not going to be caught from behind. Gained over 1,500 yards rushing, 1,000 yards each of the last two seasons. Penn State leads the uh, nation in scoring offense, and that is one of the reasons. Brett Conway for the point. It's good. Oregon held the ball almost four minutes. Penn State ran one play, and they lead seven to nothing. Red Dog Beer. Red Dog. It's not ice brewed, fire brewed, and it's not some nursing sipping red. It's just genuinely good beer. Okay, there is one thing unusual about Red Dog. It's unusually easy to drink. Because it's bold yet smooth. Because it's made with the finest natural ingredients. Are you gonna like Red Dog? Yeah, we think so. But hey, it's your call. A week of scout camp. How hard could it be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm your new troop leader. We're gonna chop wood and dig a ditch from here to there. Any questions? Bet you can't eat just one. Kid, I once went an entire week without breathing. New Wavy Lay's Hidden Valley Ranch flavor. Bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> Keeper! Hidden Valley's a special ranch. Wavy Lay's are special potato chips. If 
man were meant to fly, he would have been born with a 32 valve, 280 horsepower Lincoln Mark VIII. Their first meeting was a tie. Now it's time to settle the score. Florida State meets Florida in the USF and G Insurance Sugar Bowl tonight on ABC. That is the longest Penn State run of the year by Kajana Carter. It is not a Rose Bowl record. The record held by Tyrone Wheatley of Michigan against Washington in the 93 game when Ty went 88 yards. Kajana just went 83 officially. Now Penn State will kick off to the Oregon Ducks who have tasted reality. Out of the end zone, no. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Penn State on their first possession had moved the tight end, caused some confusion out here. Look, there is nobody in the center of the field as the ball carrier is going to come this way. Nobody's deep to make some, get some help. O'Berry is in the hole. He breaks one tackle, and there's nobody. There's a little bit of confusion, and they were blitzing. Nick Alioti, the defensive coordinator, says, we're going to gamble. We're going to blitz more than we have ever blitzed before, and when you do that, Sometimes you win big, and sometimes you get burnt. Dino Filio, number 12, is now the tailback. Whittle had the first series. O'Neill's pass, and faces is Josh Wilcox. Wilcox, the tight end, who's a little faster than you might suspect, has the first down for Oregon, and one of the Lions is shaken up. It's Penzenick. So you've got time for the injured player, and tomorrow night on ABC, the new year brings new episodes of all your Tuesday favorites, Full House, Me and the Boys, Home Improvement, Grace Under Fire, and NYPD Blue. Happy New Year tomorrow night here on ABC. First and ten. Pristine day about uh, the city of Pasadena. San Gabriel's hovering over the old oval in what was once your dry wash, but now a playground for the San Gabriel Valley region. And Penzenic will come off the field. And Lionel Fayard will replace him. Penzenic is the one that we mentioned as you take a look at Fayard. Penzenic was making his first start in this Rose Bowl, number 29. He gets hit right there. He was starting in place of Cliff Dingle, who is out. Kim Herring also played at free safety. And then Brian King, Joss Crow also was scheduled there. So now they're down to their sixth free safety. O'Neill is back to throw, setting up the screen. Pass to Phil Yaw. Phil Yaw's on the sideline. Great speed. Comes out of Dutton in North Carolina. And he's got a first down for the Oregon Ducks inside the Penn State 35. Very, very important here for Oregon to answer Penn State's lightning bolt. This is going to be a wide open game, and I like the call. Mike Bellotti, the offensive coordinator, he knows he has to make some yardage and make things happen. He opened the game with a wide receiver screen, and then another screen. Look at the block Whoa. there. <laughs> Big old Eric Reed laid one on him, didn't he? 71. He's about 290 pounds out in front of him. Mm. There's Bellotti, the offensive coordinator. Both coordinators said, we can't sit around and wait. We got to go out and fire our best shots early. Play clock had uh, just about run out on Oregon, and rather than uh, take the penalty, they spend the timeout at 10.34 to go in the first quarter.
a ZTEC engine that delivers the best highway fuel economy in its class, as well as 14 other features not found on any other car in its class. As for the rest, class dismissed. Drive the all-new Mystique. It's a whole new Mercury. A brilliant idea never starts out brilliant. It starts out ridiculed. Because it's different and people haven't seen anything like it. Be unreasonable. Insist that it can be done. Show them how. This is the software that helps you show them. Primetime moves to Wednesday. If you think pharmacists don't make mistakes, you could be dead wrong. Learn how you can protect yourself. Sawyer, Donaldson. Primetime moves to Wednesday. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle out of Carson, California, with Joel Chamberlain at the controls out of Norwood, Mass. is uh, bringing you those pictures. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle soaring over. The cameraman is Glenn Hampton. Hi, guys. Happy New Year to you. All right, here's Oregon. First down, Penn State 34-yard line. Danny O'Neill back to throw it. He has time. He has a man. Wilcox, he's at the corner. Out of bounds, just short of the one-yard line. So Josh Wilcox, the tight end, almost sneaked in for six. What you got, watch, he's going to sit up and pump. Right here, the corner bites. What you've got is the tight end lined up wide on Forbes, number 46. Forbes is the extra cornerback covering a tight end. He says it's a piece of cake. They throw it deep to the tight end, and Wilcox is the star of the offense so far for the Ducks. O'Neill, 6 of 8 now at 118 yards, and Oregon is knocking on the door. on 
defense. They are first on offense, but 70th defense. So there's Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator. He's had a lot of injuries, but they have given up 29 or more points in three of their last four games. for the touch. Matt Belden is in for the extra point to tie. Got it. Josh Wilcox is going to owe me something. Because when I visited, I sat with him and told him he could have a big day against the Penn State defense. Tylenol has been my pain reliever for as long as I can remember. I counted on it when I was working and when I became a mom. But since I started competing in triathlons, I get aches and pains in places I never knew I had. So now I use Tylenol even more. It's my doctor's recommendation for safe, effective pain relief. She really believes in it. I count on Tylenol. I trust it. Tylenol, the pain reliever doctors recommend and hospitals use most. Want a terrific souvenir? Then call now and you can own a copy of the official bowl game program from today's bowl game. Choose from the Rose, Sugar, Fiesta Bowl games, and others. Just call 1-800-769-8843 and order your official bowl game program today. Ah, the Eagle. It's a fine picture you get from up there. It's a nice soft ride today. There's virtually no wind. Oregon will kick off now to the Nittany Lions. And we'll see the Penn State offense for the second time with Mike Archie and Ambrose Fletcher, numbers 2 and 25, respectively, waiting for the ball. Belden, a, soft, a freshman from Glendale, Arizona. Oregon going 80 yards, four plays, took only 45 seconds. Three passes to Wilcox, one pass to Phil Yaw. One run that didn't go anywhere, but they got an offside call on it. Two linebackers. 
defenders in the middle that have got to fill the cracks, Rule and Asher. And if they don't step up and fill the cracks, you're going to see a lot of uh, Carter's back. Jeff Sherman and Chad Cote of the safeties. Very, very strong people down the middle in the defensive secondary. The corners are good, too. That pitch is swung out to Carter. Number 56 over there in a hurry to get a piece of it. And Troy Bailey, the defensive left in from Honolulu, got enough of Carter to slow him down. The strength, Keith, uh, and, 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 and you mentioned it, uh, this Oregon Duck defense, uh, their defensive backs, they have a lot of good players defensively. They try to get nickel and dime, five and six pack defensive backs in there, that package, as soon as they can. You see the great balance of Carter. Bailey is not easy. He's 270 pounds. It'll be third down and uh, eight for Penn State. Defense bouncing around, and uh, Kerry Collins looks at the uh, play clock, and it's down to two. And so Nick Aliotti's defensive people bouncing around, forcing Collins to have a look, and he had to spend the time out They've rather than take blitzed. the penalty. They've always blitzed, but he said we got to blitz more than we've ever done before. As we told you earlier, it was 1958. The Oregon Ducks last appeared in the Rose Bowl. The coaching staff numbered five, five coaches. Cass came down with a team that not very many people had heard much about. But he's been to big games before. Johnny McKay was one of his coaches. Dave Wilcox, the father of Josh, was one of the players. John Robinson was playing end in that ball game. Coached there for a dozen years. But this Oregon team came down and played national champion Ohio State. They lost, but only by 10-7. to 7. They've had some pretty good coaches up there, assistant coaches. Uh, George Seifert, the uh, head coach of San Francisco 49ers, was an assistant there. And Norv Turner, who is, uh, was with Dallas and now with the Washington Redskins, was on the staff at the Ducks for a while. Now let's spend a moment with Len Swan. Yeah, Keith, on uh, Chuck Penjanik, number 29, he just got the wind knocked out of him, but number 24, Tony Pittman, has a bruised shoulder, the cornerback, and number 36, Cody Carlson, on the first play of the game for Penn State, got his nose broken, they've been working on him, so whatever we may have thought about the University of Oregon Ducks, they have come out to play physical football. Oh, they'll pop you. It is third down and eight now, and Mike Archie is in the backfield, a very good pass receiver for the Lions. He goes in motion, and Collins is back, pressure's coming, they're after him. He throws it to the ground. That's exactly what Oregon wants to do. The referee threw a penalty flag. Jeremy Asher was the man who got to him. He's an inside linebacker who stepped outside, but let's see about the flag. Watch the defensive line here, Keith. This is what the quarterback's going to be facing all day. Am I going to blitz, or am I not going to blitz? Well, he calls Collins here for grounding, too. Yes, he does. No, no question about that. The, the problem is not only confusion with the quarterback prior to snap, but confusion amongst the offensive linemen and the backs on who to block. All right, Herman O'Beary, cornerback, goes back to receive. It's a 21-yard penalty and a loss of down, so the Lions, for their punt, go back inside the 20, and Darrell Kenny will do the punting. Eight minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is a 7-7 ball game. The very first play for Penn State. Kajana Carter went 83 yards. The Ducks came right back. And his kick is out of there. It's a good one. Fielded by O'Berry. And he is taken down almost in his tracks. That is very good coverage by Penn State's Chuck Benzenik. 42-yard punt and a two-yard return. Thank you. As Oregon comes to the ball again, in conversation with Coach Rich Brooks, I asked him what kind of a game would he like to play? I would like to have a game where Penn State on first down is, uh, is stopped to where they, they're either second and ten or second and eight, second and seven at, at the very best. Uh, if, if we're able to control Penn State on first down, I believe we'll be able to get in to do the things that we do well on defense. And offensively, we're going to have to score a lot of points because it's you know, unrealistic to think 
Penn State isn't going to score some points. Well, that second defensive series for Oregon pretty much went just that way. It was Kristen McLemore catching the ball on that last offensive play and picking up five yards. So the ball rests now at the 47 of Oregon, where it is second down and five. Seven seven time. There goes Whittle. He now becomes a wideout as he breaks into the open on the sidelines, catches the ball, gets the first down. In front of Tony Pittman. And that's a nice throw by Danny O'Neill. O'Neill was a four-year starter at Oregon. The all-conference quarterback has not thrown an interception the last four games of the season. Started out a little slowly. The turning point for him was when he was sick out of the game with a finger injury. His team went down to Southern Cal, University of Southern California, beat him in the Coliseum without him, and he said, hey, that's a good team. You've got Whittle and Phil Yaw both in the backfield right now for Oregon. O'Neill pumps it. He takes it down the middle of the tight end. Wilcox again, and Wilcox moves it inside the Penn State 35 for a first down. Tight end was wide open right down the middle of the field. That's a little trick there. They had a little trick pulling out all the, pulling out all the stops. Watch the tight end right here. He's going to fall down, let everybody go away from him, and then he's going to get, watch him fall down. That's your fall down play. <laughs> Linebackers forget about him, comes back in the middle. They're pulling out all the stops there early in the game. Oregon's Danny O'Neill now 10 of 12 for 143 yards, one touchdown. He's thrown to five different receivers. You know, most teams have that play. Either a little fall down screen or a fall down uh, sneak in the middle. It, it always works. I've never seen where that does not work. Chain gang was late to get a start. Somebody had to say, hey, guys, we're down here. You're up there. Come on down and join us. He's hit seven straight passes, has O'Neill. What a bright, shiny youngster he is. An absolute pleasure to spend time with him. You got a double tight end, Blake Spence and Josh Wilcox sharing the position. They both play a lot. O'Neill is back. Let's it go down the middle. This will be intercepted. It is picked off by Chuck Penzinic. He threw that one up for grabs. That was a bad decision to let it go because Chuck was sitting back there playing center field and he threw it right to him. Well, Penzinic, who was injured earlier in the game, gets his first interception. And O'Neill, the first interception in the last five. There's Penzinic right there, just going to back up, play his eyes. Poor throw, obviously, by O'Neill. He had an open receiver going across the field. He was, did have some people in his face, though. I mean, Penn State folks get in your face. They're big. Sometimes you try to take advantage of a position, the free yep. safety position, right. and you don't read the cover. Here goes Carter. And Dejana <laughs> on his second effort. Again, they thought they had him, and two yards later, they finally do. Alex First hit Molden was by Bailey, but tackle. Bailey didn't hold him. You've got to wrap this man up, boy. I tell you, you've got to put the lock on him. <laughs> well, here's the last interception by O'Neill. And you don't always have to sack a quarterback. Just get close to him and get him in, get in his face where he's going to throw a little bit earlier than he'd like to.
Paterno told me last week in talking with him about what he saw in this Oregon football team. They're extremely well coached. They're very intelligent. Play situations really well. Uh, and offensively, they just hang in there and hang in there and hang in there, and then they, all of a sudden they're in there, they're, they're right the next to you in the, in the fourth quarter, and they make plays and they beat you. So I mean, they're they're a gutty football team. They're really a bunch of tough, good kids. This is Whittle, and he gets to the 45. It's the best starting point of the ball game for either team from their own 49-yard line, and that's a pickup. Uh, right close to six yards for Whittle. Big offensive lineman, uh, Harden, Steve Harden, number 77, was pulling out in front of him. He didn't hit anybody, but uh, they were all running around him. <laughs> well, he's a dead gum big. It's like trying to get around a corn crib he's on wheels. <laughs> he's 324. He didn't hit anybody, but he helped the runner because everybody was running around him. There's contact and penalty flag. Coming up tonight, the grand finale of our bowl triple header as the Florida State Seminoles and the Florida Gators meet in a rematch of this season's dramatic tie, the USF&G Insurance Sugar Bowl game. Coming up, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, following the Rose Bowl here on ABC Sports. Defense, all side, five yards, first down. That'll be a first down for Oregon on the contact along the line of scrimmage by the Penn State defender. Time remaining first quarter, clock stopped at 5-10. Change move. They kind of change, are kind of slow to first move. The ball is on the 40. That's the fourth penalty by the Nittany Lions. One of the things you worry about, you know, you, sometimes you're sharp, sometimes you're not quite so sharp for a while when you come back after a layoff. O'Deal. Steps away, gets away, picks up some real estate on his own. Actually, he had McLemore breaking loose on a corner, but by the time he picked him up, it was too late. And so he ran away from the hot breath of the pursuers. O'Neill is kind of nifty. He can scramble. He just doesn't scramble around behind the line of scrimmage. If he gets out and there's some yardage to be made, he can uh, cross the line of scrimmage. Mike Bellotti, the offensive coordinator, doing a nice job with the talent. Uh, a lot of skill players, a lot of speed at those positions. Dil Dino Filio, the single back, McLemore's number one. He's in motion. Call on the 34. Pressure coming. O'Neill better hurry. Dumps it in a hurry. Gets it to Filio. He's down the sidelines. And a first down, down around the 15-yard line for the Oregon Ducks. Pretty close to being six. Yeah, this is a nice play. I like this play. Everything goes away from our camera position here. The back goes to that side and then swings back. O'Neill makes a little fake. It's a nice looking play. One of the things that uh, Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator, says concerned him is that things that are new that he hasn't seen before. He knows a team that's a big uh, underdog might come out with some new things, and he's seen a few of them already here this afternoon. First down at the Penn State 15-yard line. That ball is thrown to Phil Yaw. It is out of bounds. Did he have possession? No. Incomplete forward pass. He had one hand on it. And never got control of it. I thought they had two men moving myself. I thought they had Wilcox moving, and I thought somebody at the top of it might have been moving too. A lot of screens. This is another screen. Fake the draw. Swing it wide. You got to trust your quarterback on something like that. It's a good call. He never had possession. Second down and ten from the Lions' 15-yard line. After that lightning bolt by Carter, and Oregon's pretty much had control of this first quarter. That ball is thrown to Phil Yaw. He puts his head down and finds his way to the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and five. Tony Pittman, number 24, making the hit for the Lions. Tony Pittman was one of the scholarship winners. Yes, outstanding academics. 3.57 in industrial engineering. Gain of five yards. Son of a great Penn State player himself. Third and five for the Oregon Ducks at the Penn State 10. Shotgun. Give it a fill, y'all. Over the left side. Down close to a first down. Depends on the mark. Ben Stewart brought him down. 
down Vince for the Lions. Making the tackle. And I think he's just short. Melbourne will come. They will take the three rather than risk not getting the first down at the five. And they're four almost a full yard short of it. So Belden is out to try the kick. Ryan Perry Smith will hold it. And Rob Williams will snap it. 23 yard field goal try. He's six of six inside the 24.
dramatic wraparound instrument panel. On your left, a three-person memory system. On your right, a 10-disc JBL audio system framed in burl walnut. Below you, leather eight-way power seats. And all around you, a car so beautifully designed it can go 100,000 miles between scheduled tune-ups. Lincoln Mark 8, give up. You're surrounded. Lincoln Mark 8 with the V8 Intex system. Drive everything else first. Rauchen verboten. Apagorevete to kaplisma. Tabako suanai de kudasai. Yetato fumare. Cigarette chilmas. Defense de In answer to our passengers' requests, Delta Airlines has become the first and only U.S. airline to fly totally smoke-free worldwide. Okay, we admit the new digital High Note Ultra is not the first computer with a full-sized keyboard, full-size screen, or a 486 75 megahertz processor. But it is the first one with all that ever to fit in this. The new digital High Note Ultra, about four pounds light and one inch thin. Once again, proving the maxim that good things come in small manila envelopes. Morning, guys. Just when you think your diarrhea medicine is working. Oh, boy. What's wrong? It can let you down. But you can count on Imodium AD to stop diarrhea, often in just one dose. Instead of dose after dose, more than a third of a bottle of the pink stuff. And Imodium AD is even better than the leading prescription. I told you we should have stopped for Imodium AD. Imodium AD, one dose relief you can count on. We go to the second quarter of play in the Rose Bowl game. We have a new tandem in the Penn State backfield. John Whitman at fullback and Mike Archie at tailback as the Nittany Lions tied with the Oregon Ducks 7-7 on the football. Second down and six just inside the Oregon 35. Freddie Scott is yet to see the ball today. He's the man in motion. Handed to Archie into traffic one yard. That'll do it. Mike Archie, the ball carrier. Tackled by Derek Barnes. Here's a look at the numbers of the first quarter. Oregon has uh, had possession one more time. That's why they have a few more plays. First downs, Oregon is doing it through the air, 167 yards. And Penn State on the ground with 110. Carter has 99 yards in the first quarter alone. Third down and a short six. Gary Collin quickly to the sideline. Pass is caught by Bobby Ingram, and they'll give him the mark for the first down at the 28-yard line of Oregon. He got the ball very quickly, and he caught it in front of Alex Molden. Molden, if he gets, I mean, it's a fractional thing. If he's a half, less than a half a second quicker, he probably intercepts him. The game plan is the strength of the, the Ducks defensively are their corners and def defensive backs. Gator You'll see a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Aliotti says, I'm going to stop the run with seven and eight guys. My strength is my backs. I'm going to leave them with a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, so there should be some big play opportunities. Here's Kajana Carter carrying the ball in the middle, and they finally wrestle him down, but again, he's got about six Kajana yards, and here's 20. Jack on the Keith, you know, when Carla comes out of the ball game, Penn State's never going to miss a beat because Archie's a terrific back, not quite as explosive as he is, uh, as Carla is, but very flamboyant. Pitch is a third back, quiet, but when he gets in the ball game, he is all business. We should probably see all three of them play to keep Kajana Carter fresh yards. and watch the Penn State Lions try and rack up some yardage on the ground. Keith? Carter seven carries 105 yards and a touchdown so far. Flips and down he goes on one knee back at the 34. So he's back to a yard beyond the original line of scrimmage. Lost his footing. And that feels very good. It's a problem with that field. Just to that that put was, such pressure on it. Yeah, that was a design to, to fake to one side and yep. then go back the other way. And he just yep. slipped on the turf. Yep. Archie back now. It's a passing down on third and 11. As we told you a while ago, Archie's a very good receiver. Junior out of Sharon, PA. Ducks coming after him. Collins slips and doesn't go down. Pass to the end zone. Scott had it on his fingertips and couldn't hold it. Alex Molden, I think, got a piece of it. Jeff Sherman was there, but I think Molden tipped it just a little bit, and Freddie Scott otherwise would have had
does a nice job. He slips on the turf, but this ball is well thrown. I don't know if it's tipped or not. Yep, yeah, it just was tipped. A little. Yep. Alex Molden, just Un cut a finger. Underthrown, just a tap. So it's three plays in a row. The Penn Staters have slipped a little bit here, so maybe they'll be changing shoes. Brett Conway for a field goal try from the 40, 36 for 46 yards. He doesn't get it, and the Oregon Ducks celebrate their defensive effort as they turn Penn State away at 12.26 to go in the first half of 7-7-5. Football's on. Gotta build a TV. Oh, I'm not gonna miss this. Oh, no. I'm gonna build a wide screen with color. Stereo sound. Then we're gonna build the big speakers. At the end of one, Bud Light leads seven to nothing. One action. Get your game card where you buy Bud and Bud Light. Higgy, this is amazing. <laughs> you could win one million dollars. Yeah, but something's missing. Now what are you guys looking at? <laughs> I love your books. I'd like to see them breathe. Peter's talking to a Hollywood big shot. I'd like to see them come to life. I'm thinking big screen. 3,000 miles away, and you can see his face in perfect detail, unfortunately. Personally, I feel like we're a family already. Personally, I don't want to be in his family. Sounds good. Yeah. I'd like to see it fleshed out a little. Watch your pockets, guys. Here in Ohio, we tested the new Honda Accord V6 and discovered that the car more people buy than any other is now better and quicker than ever before. Now why would you want a car that lets you get away so fast? <laughs> You're late. Open the You've got your reasons. The new Accord V6 from Honda. What do the big game, the big bang, the big voice, and the big adventure have in common? Find out on the Doritos Super Bowl halftime show on ABC. Getting a little hazy out looking toward the ocean. Working through the mountains, Oregon. the Santa Monica's and the San Gabriel's. And nestled down here in quiet comfort, the Rose Bowl filled with 100,000 folks. Jones and Whittle in the backfield behind Danny O'Neill now. Oregon ball, first down, 29-yard line. O'Neill back, gets some pressure, gets his pass off. Pass is caught by Jones out of the backfield. Made something out of nothing. He kept looking around, found his safety valve, and completed the pass for seven yards. O'Neill now is 13 of 17. He has a touchdown. He's been picked once. He was 12 of 16 in the first quarter alone, so the Ducks are throwing the ball, and they're getting their yardage a lot of times by throwing it short to the backs and allowing them to run, but the passing game is primary uh, with O'Neill. Cameron Ricketts and uh, Kristen McLemore to the left side. O'Neill getting pressure. Willie Smith, they throw it to Ricketts. He can fly, and he is caught from behind. If they don't get him, Brad uh, Scioli, if Scioli doesn't get him, he's gone. This is the wide receiver screen that Oregon loves to run. That's McLemore. He's going to clear out, and Ricketts will come into the picture and catch the football. Now, Scioli's a defensive lineman. He comes back, number five. He's the biggest defensive lineman you'll ever see, but he's a defensive lineman. Comes back and saves a big uh, play for the Ducks. Brad Scioli can run as uh, Josh Wilcox being helped from the field, shaken up. That's a hole. Well, they can't afford to lose him. He caught five balls in the first quarter. It's first down Oregon, 45-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven time. Second quarter of play. O'Neill gives to Whittle. Oregon, he slipped a little bit when he planted to, to make his cut, too. So it's... Uh, they're looking to Wilcox. You don't like to see that because sometimes that says concussion. Remember what happened? Remember what happened? <laughs> it looks like he did get hit in the head, and if that's, uh, if that's anything like a concussion, he's kind of a loose wire anyway, isn't he, Keith? Yep, he's a live wire, no <laughs> doubt about that. Second down and seven. O'Neill turns, throws over here, pass is caught by McLemore. Trying to set a screen for him, and he's short of the first down by a yard. Brought down by Phil Yavor Cody. Linebacker who defended his zone well. The linebackers for Penn 
State are the strength of this defensive unit. Yoboa Cody, Gelsheiser, number 16, and Willie Smith, all three of them. Uh, outstanding Secure players, game. all conference players, first or second team. Gelsheiser, 16, led the team in tackles the last three years. Third down, a yard and a half. They run for it, give it a whirl, won't get there. Ricky Whittle is hit almost before the line of scrimmage by number eight, Jason Collins, a strong safety who had come up and broke on the play from the line of scrimmage. So the Ducks will have to punt it. Mike Archie will be the deep man as Matt Belden comes in for the punting. Just 95 cents. You don't understand. I need 95 cents. What does she need 95 cents for, Jerry? Yeah, she's already got an egg of a muffin. Only through January, so hurry. Uh, what are we, a change machine? On this day in sports history, baseball legend Brett Sooner got his 200th hit. For more historic moments, watch a whole new ball game next Monday here on ABC. Here's a look at the possessions of the... Penn State Nittany Lions, they, they usually script the first 20, 25 plays. First drive wasn't hard, that long run, 83-yard touchdown, but since then, not much production. All right, let's see what Nick Aliotti decides to do here with his defense. Penn State ball back on the 12-yard line. Carter is the deep man. Here comes Bobby Ingram on a reverse. Chad Cota takes him down at the 17. Gain five yards. Chad Cota, the uh, strong safety. Cota is the, uh, well, they say he's the glue. Aliotti says he's the glue that holds that group together. Yeah, he's their MVP this year. Exactly. He's the team most valuable player. He is making his 43rd consecutive start. And he, uh, there you are. Those are the two. It's his fifth tackle. Somebody blew a 
All of Hollywood is here. You know that HBO movie you love so much? Don't look now. The director is right over there by the sculpture. I've just got to meet him. The man is a legend. Check that. He's a genius in the making. Excuse me. Do you have any idea how excited I am to meet you? No. I loved your last film. It was so gutsy and tense. No one else makes movies like that. I can't believe I'm actually standing here talking to you. Neither can I. I have to tell you, that HBO movie really spoke to me. HBO talked about movies. Movies that matter. HBO makes them and you don't want to miss them. Don't tell me you didn't direct that. Expensive. Well, he spends 
State Wood. Wednesday night, special on ABC. First three of TV's funniest ladies in two great hours of comedy, Roseanne, Grace, another Roseanne, and Ellen, starting at 8, 7 Central. Then Sam Donaldson and Diane Sawyer move to Wednesday with a new primetime live on its new night. Wednesday night on ABC. Well, I missed part of that uh, narrative, but the ball comes back to the 40 eight yard line where it'll be second down at eight they accepted the motion penalty second down at eight and state jumps around with his defense are coming o'neill better hurry gets it out and it is incomplete the pass intended for blake spence the tight end who is on in relief of josh wilcox and Spence never had a real chance at it because uh, Marlon Forbes had him covered like a blanket. Uh, Spence is only a redshirt freshman, only eight catches on the year. Penn State doing a nice job that time, jumping around, giving Danny O'Neill a little bit different look. 7-7 seven, seven tie. A lot of people surprised by that with seven minutes to go in the first half. Third and eight. Willie Smith after O'Neill, he's got it. Willie Smith caught Atkins, slipped underneath. Atkins actually was the first man to get him. He got him around the legs, and Oregon will be punting. There's Willie Smith, the outside linebacker. Going to come into with Wiggins, the uh, tackle. And stayed number two in the Big Ten in sacking the opposing quarterbacks. There was nobody open downfield. Mike Archie. Waiting for the punt. Melvin gets a dandy this time. Archie all the way back to the nine. And tackled at the 14. 54-yard punt. A six-yard return. 6.09 to go in the first half. So I'll meet you under the clock at Union Station. Wonderful. Bye. Oh, Allison. How will I know it's you? I'll be holding a bag of Doritos. The new bag? Of course. I can see it now. now. Together on the beach with the new bag of Doritos. April in Paris with the new bag of Doritos. Down the aisle with our new bag of Doritos. Me and... Allison? Back off. He's mine. Doritos tortilla chips. Flavors the way you look at life. Do me a favor, don't scream. On Friday, January 13th, see a tale from the crypt so terrifying it can only be seen at the movies. No! Demon Knight Rated R starts Friday the 13th. Imagine a rent-a-car company that will pick you up right at your door. That's Enterprise. Call us, we'll arrange to come to you. Take you back to our office, and you're on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Pac-10 member institutions are among the finest universities in the country. They're producing leaders in the workforce for today and the future. If you're an employer with full-time, part-time, or internship employment opportunities, the Pac-10 University Career Centers access thousands of qualified students and alumni. To list your job openings, call the Career Centers or advertise at your choice of universities through the Pac-10 Job Track One Call Job Listing Service. Just call 800-999-8725. 6.09, the time remaining. You see the quarterback comparison so far in the game. And State has been trying to get uh, Kajana Carter going. They got him going big on the first play of the game, but I think they're going to throw a little bit more with Collins. From the 14, Collins lets it go. He has to Freddie Scott. Scott is six-footer, sophomore, Southfield, Michigan. Freddie Scott. He caught the ball in front of Herman O'Berry. That is Tournament House. Picture provided for the Goodyear Blimp Eagle. Tournament House.
this is, of course, where the Tournament of Roses business First is conducted. Ten. Jack French, the executive director, and Bill Flynn, and the entire staff work there. Ain't a bad place to hang your hat if you got to work somewhere. Enjoyed I'll being over that. there the other day with the coaches. Wonderful house. Ooh. This is Kajana Carter. Ball comes out. Oregon diving. Got a shot at it. Ducks have it. Second fumble by Carter. Chad Coda. The strong safety. Troy Bailey, the man who covered it. Coda knocked it out. Watch Coda. Coda's right here. Watch as he's going to come and force. The man is going to come right here, Carter, and he's just going to stick his helmet right into the, uh, where the ball is. Knocks it out. That's the second fumble of the day for Carter. This one, the Ducks come up with. And it's first down at the Penn State 33-yard line. Ricky Whittle, the deep back. Danny O'Neill trying to cash it quickly. Got to hurry. Can't do it. Lions knock him down. Todd Atkins just kept coming and grinding and coming, and finally he got him. Let's go back and take a look at this hit on the fumble. Chad Coda, that's a picture perfect tackle. His head is up. The ball is, the head is on the ball. That's pretty good collision by two pretty good football players. Seven yard loss by Danny O'Neill on the tackle by Atkins and Josh Wilcox has returned to the lineup to tight end. They need him. Things slowed down when he left the ball game. This is Whittle looking for a crack to run in, and the Lions are not going to give it to you at this point in time. Number six, Aaron Collins and Tony Pittman. Tackle by the people Collins to make the tackle. Tony Pittman. So Oregon having the ball first down at the 33 of Penn State going the other way right now on good defense by the Nittany Lions. It'll be third and 17. Wayne Jones, the fullback, the single back here. He's a blocker. Pass down the middle is good, but it's short of a first down. The pass is caught by Pat Johnson, who is the burner. He's the fastest man in the stadium. As a 17-year-old ran a 10 3 and a 20.7 200 meters, but that pass is good for 13 yards. It is short of the first down. It is fourth down for Oregon. So that first play was a big play by Todd Atkins defensively. Matt Belden, who missed from 23 yards, will now try from 44 or 45, depending on where they mark it. 352 remaining in the first half. You are now free to operate all electronic devices. What a hard-working bunch. And you're working harder than most. I've seen bigger screens on a calculator. Now, this is a nifty screen, but objects may shift during the flight. And you're working too hard because, frankly, your hands are just designed wrong. Ooh, an IBM ThinkPad. See, now this is what it's like to fly first class. How much longer can he last on that battery? Hey, Larry, sometime today? Larry Doty for the birdie. Yeah. Hmm. Hooked it. Okay, I'll get him down. The copper top. Tops them all. Imagine a rent-a-car company that will pick you up right at your door. That's Enterprise. Call us. We'll arrange to come to you. Take you back to our office, and you're on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Your money. How do you feel about investing it? In this market, of course you're... <coughs> the smart thing is to start small. $50 a month with a Janus no-load mutual fund. $50. That's not so scary, is it? Start to think big. Janus Funds. Let's take a look at the previous play. 
Tight man coverage. O'Neill's going to get back and hit Johnson coming from the right side. It's a perfect throw to a man with a lot of speed. He just as it didn't, didn't catch the ball and keep running. Yeah, he just fell down. Matt Belden now, and we've decided it's a 44-yard try. Actually, 44 and a half, if you want to be precise about it. His longest is 47. And it's on its way, and it is no good. He's missed two. He missed from 23, and now he's missed from 44, and he missed them both wide right. You folks in Tallahassee know about that. He's a true freshman who has uh, handled both the punting and the place kicking all year long. First and 10, Penn State. First play of the ball game, Penn State, 83 yards, touchdown. The next 23 plays, they gained 83 yards. Kerry Collins, Bobby Ingram, wide open. He ran Molden off. Molden was 10 yards down the field, turning around looking for him, and he catches the ball. So good play by Ingram. Coming up tonight, the grand finale of our bowl triple header, Florida State and the Florida Gators. Rematch after their dramatic tie. USF and G Insurance Sugar Bowl, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific here on ABC Sports. Boy, you just hope that game uh, proves up to be as exciting as the previous one. Big tickets. I may not want to watch it if it's like that. <laughs> That's a good pass by Kerry Collins. Strong arm, and again, he's going. You've got to get the ball Ingram. to your wide receivers. Both Ingram and Scott both averaged 20 yards uh, per reception this year, and both totaled over 1,000 yards. In fact, Scott was a little under 1,000. But those are the big play guys for Penn State. You've got so many choices. You've got Carter in the backfield. You've got Brady at tight end. You've got two outstanding wide receivers, but you cannot make mistakes. You can't put the ball on the ground. 3.20 to go in the first half. Scott's in motion. Carter over the left side going deep as a receiver. The pass thrown toward him and it is incomplete. Defending is Kenny Wheaton for Oregon. And Carter had no chance at catching that ball. Wheaton is the nickelback, the fifth back that Oregon uses in their defensive schemes. He is a reserve, but made the all-conference team, the second team, as a reserve redshirt freshman for Nick Aliotti. Second down and 10 for the Nifty Lions. Side 
60 times. Desmond and they've the scored tackle. 56 of the 60. And 47 consecutive times they've been inside the opponent's 20, they have scored. And that is one of the reasons right there. Ran again. Rollback. That's the other reason. Ryan Mill. <laughs> he slams it in there. Number 22 is 6'3 and 253 pounds. He's a good receiver and a Both tough, a load, aren't they? tough kid. Oh boy, they're tough. Conway for the point. Taken down after a 
number three. And they're going to play right now. Here they go. A little short out. O'Neal on a rollout. Got a hurry and gets out of bounds. He picked up maybe a yard. Uh, he just scampered out of bounds to stop the clock at 30 seconds. There was nobody on that side of the field for O'Neal to throw the ball to. I'm impressed, uh, Keith, with O'Neal. We had a nice chat with him the other day. We were impressed with him and how bright eyed and. Uh, intelligent he was and he'd look yeah. you straight in the eye but the way he's playing I think the key is he's a four-year starter and as I said he's making his 41st start and when you've played that many games and that many snaps nothing really phases you Oregon has one timeout remaining O'Neill is now 20 out of 25 for 260 yards he's looking for McLemore he goes underneath McLemore to Josh Wilcox for a first down at the 11 yard line 23 seconds remaining in the first half. And as you pick up a first down in the last two minutes of the half, they stop the clock to move the chains. And the chain pullers are pretty slow. <laughs> I don't know, does that play count? I mean, the chains were not in place. The officials didn't oh, yeah, pay they, any attention the, to well, it. Well, the umpire marked the ball ready for play and got away from it, so. Aren't you supposed to have the marker down? They're, they were in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10 with 20 seconds remaining in the first half at the 11 of Penn State. That's McLemore. He's knocked down at the 10-yard line. Now they may have to spend the time out. Use that timeout. Line Gil Heiser on the tackle. So Danny O'Neill with a timeout to talk here, and he told us earlier about where his season took the big turn for it. It came when he was at home watching his team play on the road. Watching the SC game on TV in Eugene. I uh, watched my team go down to my, you know, my home area and play SC in the Coliseum and watching them win uh, and, and beat SC, you know, pretty soundly with a, with a great victory and uh, really put my, my attitude and, and the way I approach uh, this year differently, completely changed it. You know, I thought for some reason, and I don't know where I got this, that I had to put up numbers or that I had to drive the team down and, you know, make touchdown passes. And when I saw that SC game, I said, you know, this is a great football team with or without me. And this is a great offense with or without me. And uh, uh, when I got healthy and was able to return to this uh, to the team, I just wanted to be a part of what's going on here. Well, he's playing like it. Now they've got one shot. Maybe they can have time. If they don't connect in the end zone, then they'll they'll be able to get a field goal well, try. You, first of all, you can't run the ball. No, got to throw in the end zone. Secondly, you can't take a sack. Quarterbacks don't get sacked. Now. You gotta get ready, you gotta throw it in the end zone, complete, or throw it incomplete. And he didn't throw it in the end zone. And he didn't get out of bounds. And they're not gonna score. Time's gonna run out on them. They did not get out of bounds. You cannot, you gotta throw the ball into the end zone. So they don't do the two things they had to do. And the half is over. And at halftime, Penn State 14, Oregon 7, and Dameron Ricketts was wide open. He just didn't see it. But it has been a most entertaining first half of play, and the second half may be just as good. Right now, let's go to our studios and join John Sorn. Thanks, Keith, and we'll get back to you in just a moment, and we'll also have the Wavy Lays Halftime Report right after this message, and a word from our ABC station. Stick around. It's 1954 at the University of Milan, and a young man gets a C in mathematics, which causes him to lose his scholarship and take up sidewalk drawing, which spawns a worldwide movement in art that inspires a burgeoning painter which leads to the opening at the museum that caused the traffic jam that's making you late for work. With all that can go wrong in your day, isn't it nice to know you can depend on your Honda Civic? Here at Columbus,
Columbus University, we pride ourselves on our commitment to academic excellence, the quality of our sports facilities, and the diversity of our student body. Located on the beautiful campus. But on Wednesday, January 11th, get ready to learn what's really going on. Good day. My time to raise a body. What's wrong with you? Everybody stay calm. Call security now. Stop it. No, no, it's the wrong guy. Higher Learning, a film by John Singleton, rated R. Day One is back with Sawyer and Sawyer. This Thursday, Anesthesia. Day One uncovers dangerous mistakes by those responsible for keeping you alive. And Oprah, if you think you know her, you're wrong. Day One returns Thursday. The new Jimmy has all the strength of a GMC truck. Including 50 advances in sound isolation. So it's easy to keep the outside world outside. See the all-new Jimmy at your Delaware Valley GMC truck dealer today. It's Subaru All-Wheel Drive Days. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't the other guys have all-wheel drive days? Oh, yeah. They don't have all-wheel drive. They don't have cars that can transfer power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip like a Subaru Legacy or Impreza can. No wonder they don't have all-wheel drive days. Of course, they could have. Let's get stuck in the snow days. You only have till January 3rd to lease an all-wheel drive Legacy from dealer stock for zero down and $2.99 a month. Sky 6, your eye on the sky, only on Action News. The Bull Day 95 Wavy Lays Halftime Report. Brought to you by Wavy Lays brand potato chips. Bet you can't eat just one. From our studio in New York, your host, John Saunders. 14 to 7 is the score. Penn State over Oregon. The second half is coming up. Scores and highlights with Todd Blackledge in just a moment. But right now, let's take you back out to Pasadena and Keith Jackson. Keith. All right, John, we're going to join the Penn State Blue Band, the Marching Blue Band, right now as they entertain at halftime. The Rose Bowl, director of the Marching Blue Band is Dr. Richard Monday. The music is Jesus Christ Superstar.
The University of Oregon encourages both. In addition to 18 Rhodes Scholars, 203 Fulbright Scholars, and two Nobel Prize winners, 10 of our 78 Olympic competitors won medals in their events. So whether the mind or the body is more important, just depends on what circles you run in. If you're in high school and you want to play sports at NCAA Division I or II school, you must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Ask your coach or guidance counselor for one of these student release forms. Fill it out and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in NCAA Division I or II. For more information, call 319-337-1492. It's regarded among the top 10 schools in the world for molecular biology. Ranks seventh in America in international economics. Number three in interior architecture. Sixth in special education. And among the very best in the country for journalism, business, and music. How's that for initial impressions? Once again, to the Wavy Lays Halftime Report. John Saunders here with Todd Blackledge. We'll get to Todd and highlights in just a moment. The score is 14-7, to Penn State leading Oregon. Other bowls going on today, including the Fiesta Bowl. Colorado is pasting Notre Dame. Cordell Stewart has thrown for over 100. He's also carried for over 100. Rashawn Salon, the Heisman Trophy winner, at 47 yards rushing in the first half. South Carolina and West Virginia in the CarQuest Bowl. South Carolina wins their first bowl ever. Steve Tannehill did it, having a terrific day. Two-yard touchdown pass to Boomer Foster here. Tannehill fired up as they're up 7 to nothing. Robert Walker on the ground for West Virginia. 24 yards for the touchdown, making it 10 to 7, but too much Steve Tannehill. Yeah, Tannehill had a great ball game. 227 yards passing and a touchdown, and also ran a little bit as he had to scramble out of the pocket. This four-yard touchdown for Tannehill. He really matured under new head coach Brad Scott. 24-21 the final. South Carolina, their first ever bowl win. They had lost their previous eight. Cotton Bowl, this one was a blowout from the start. Tech Texas Tech against USC. Rob Johnson helped contribute 28 points in the first quarter. That was a Cotton Bowl record. Here, 13 yards to Keyshawn Johnson, who had a terrific day as well. Big receiver. Watched the extension on the sideline. Knows where the boundary is. Gets his feet in. Big touchdown. Both Johnsons had good numbers. Rob threw for 289 yards. Keyshawn, 222 yards, a new Cotton Bowl record. Seventh straight loss in the Cotton Bowl for the Southwest Conference. This is the last year they'll represent Southwest Conference there. Alabama and Ohio State, you saw this one earlier here on ABC. There was a dog running around on the field stopping things early. But Sherman Williams was anything but a dog here. Seven yards on the run, terrific day. Everything Sherman Williams touched today turned to gold for Alabama. 359 yards all-purpose for the Crimson Tide. 27 carries, 166 yards and a touchdown. Eight receptions, 155 yards and a touchdown. The Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa, Florida between Duke and Wisconsin. Wisconsin wins the seesaw fair. Darrell Bevel, 11 yards to Jason Burns. And it was back to a two-touchdown game. The Badgers lost Brent Moss this year, early in the year, but all was not lost. Terrell Fletcher today, career high, 241 yards on 39 carries, also a Hall of Fame bowl record. For Spence Fisher of Duke, 28 of 46, 314 yards, and that's the good news. Four interceptions, that's a Hall of Fame record. The bad news, through an interception on Duke's first three possessions. That wraps up the day. There's one more game, of course, still to come on ABC. Following the Rose Bowl, for more on that, let's go to New Orleans now and join Brent Musburger and Dick Vermeil. Gentlemen. John, the early birds here at the Louisiana Superdome are being treated to a little flag football here in the background. Welcome, everybody. We should be in for a real treat, a high-scoring game to close out what has been a wonderful college football season. Take a look at this one graphic, folks. This is the ninth time that we have had a rematch in a bowl game. My colleague Dick Vermeil was involved in a very famous one. He's very modest, he's very humble, but he got his first NFL job because you beat Woody Hayes at Ohio State. Well, I think in that situation, Ohio State had beaten us soundly early, so the advantage goes to the loser. But in this situation, it ended up in a tie. I think that's how it starts tonight. All right, John, should be a good one. Let's go back to you. 
All right, guys, we'll see you for the rematch. That's coming up following the second half of the Rose Bowl. Enjoy it. You can't play in the Super Bowl, but Edge can get you closer than ever in the Edge Ultimate Super Bowl Instant Win Game. If you win, you and a friend will head to the sidelines with NFL Films on an all-expense-paid trip to Super Bowl 29 in Miami. Just look for this ad in most Sunday papers January 15th for your chance to win instantly. The Edge Ultimate Super Bowl Instant Win Game. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. After more than half a century of investigations aimed at finding a planetary system outside our own, it has finally been done. Now we have firm evidence that they do exist in the universe, and that is priceless. What we know is that we deal with the system of three or more planetary objects orbiting a, a star called the Pulsar. Planets around pulsars probably mean that planets can form anywhere quite easily. So another conclusion is that probably there are plenty of planets in the universe. If there are so many planetary systems, the probability that life exists somewhere else, not only on Earth, in our own planetary system, is not zero. It may actually be quite significant. This is just the typical alien that I thought of. I use this interesting and fascinating subject to teach students a variety of subjects in science that in other ways they would probably never encounter. Yes. Found a planet? What, what is it like? I thought going away to college meant I didn't have to answer to anybody anymore. I could stay out all night, tailgate before a game, go to a bar after. One Saturday, we even took our victory celebration on the road. I drove straight into a drunk driving conviction. Which means that when I get to this question about ever being convicted of a crime, I have to answer yes. The Full Day 95 Wavy Lays Halftime Report has been brought to you by Wavy Lays brand potato chips. Bet you can't eat just one. The University of Oregon marching band is on the field here at halftime of the Rose Bowl. Penn State 14, Oregon 7. Dr. Rod Harkins is the director of the music at Malaguena.
platforms. Wednesday, it's Roseanne twice with Grace in the middle. First, David's dream lover is Rosie. What are we going to do? What choice do we have? you got to give yourself to him. Roseanne at 8, 7 Central. Then, will Grace let Libby enter a talent contest? Does she dance? Not as good as she sings. On Grace, followed by an all-new Roseanne on a special Wednesday. This is an Action News Halftime Report with Jim Gardner. Good evening. Here are some of the big stories on Action News at this hour. Penn State has one half of a football game left before it can complete an undefeated season and at least make their argument for a national championship. Phil Andrews joins us live now from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Phil? Hi, Jim. How you doing? Yes, there are still some questions as to whether or not Penn State has a shot at a national title, given the fact Nebraska beat Miami last night. And with that in mind today, you have to wonder what Penn State's frame of mind was coming into the Rose Bowl. Well, those questions were all answered early in the game when Heisman Trophy uh, runner-up Kijana Carter took the ball on a first play from scrimmage and took it a Penn State bowl record 83 yards, electrifying the crowd and giving the Nittany Lions an early 7-0 lead. Oregon came back to tie it at 7, but with time running out in the second half, Brian Mill gave Penn State the 14-7 lead, and that's where we stand at halftime. And coming up later tonight on Action News after the Sugar Bowl, complete highlights with Gary Popper, and I'll have post-game reactions, Jim. Thank you, Phil. In other news at this hour, Philadelphia police say a stolen car was involved in a fatal accident late today. It happened near Greenwood and Michener Streets in West Oak Lane. Police say the stolen car hit and killed an unidentified man. Two suspects were taken from the car and now face a long list of charges. Camden County authorities say a Philadelphia man was the suspect killed by a sharpshooter after a double murder kidnapping yesterday. He has been identified as 24-year-old Nia Nguyen, a gang member with a long criminal record. We will have more and AccuWeather after the game tonight. To a seven-year-old, velocity, mass, and momentum aren't as interesting as the song on the radio. And crash test dummies don't go on family vacations. But the people who buy Volkswagen Jettas do. That's why the new Jetta has dual airbags, front and rear crumple zones, side impact beams, and a rigid passenger safety cage. Velocity, mass, and momentum don't mean much to children, and we plan on keeping it that way. Working in the city can get to you after a while. I commuted for 20 years until one day I just snapped and said, enough is enough. So I gave it all up and started working out of my house. I thought it would be a nice change of pace. Hey, you! Get off my lawn! Staples has everything you need to work out of your home. The guaranteed low price on over 5,000 office supplies. I don't care if you're the mailman! Staples. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah, they all look innocent enough, until they start ganging up on you. Then you'll be glad you invested in the security of Jeep Grand Cherokee with full-time four-wheel drive, 190 horsepower engine, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a driver's airbag. Because when you're outnumbered millions to one, you need all the help you can get. Now get great values on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your key states, Jeep and Eagle dealer. 25 years of all my children, tomorrow at 10. The seven ball game, and yes, that is correct, ladies and gentlemen. It has not been a blowout that so many people in the eastern part of the country were predicting, and people in right here in Southern California were predicting. It's been a hard, tough football game. It started out, however, with a lightning bolt from Kajana Carter. Explosive, uh, that's, the, that's my adjective for him. It's the first play of the ball game. Really, number 50 is going to get a block. He's going to break a tackle. And 83 yards later, Kajana Carter just shows you why he is such an outstanding running back. But the Oregon Ducks responded. Uh, eventually, Danny O'Neill got him down close and connected with Josh Wilcox as tight end, who caught three balls in this drive for the touchdown to tie it at seven. And it stayed that way for a long time as they got serious along the line of scrimmage. And then finally this big play to Joe Juravicious, who had caught only one ball prior to this. He took it to the one, and from the one-yard line, Brian Milne took it into the end zone with a good, solid block from Kajana Carter. And we're ready to go with a second half of play, 14-7, Nittany Lions. Oregon will kick it off. Matt Belden will kick it. Mike Archie is the man they'd like to return it. Ambrose Fletcher is back there with him. This is a very big defensive series right here for Oregon. Belden, who missed two field goals in the first half, knocks it back to the one-yard line. And Archie comes back to the 20-21. Here is Lynn Swan. Key 
Keith, I talked with Joe Paterno at the halftime, and he said this defense of Oregon's it's outstanding. He said the one thing they're doing differently is throwing a different blitz package at the offense he wasn't looking for. And I asked him, after the big play by Chicana by Kajana Carter, did that affect the offense? He said, you know, there could be something to that. Sometimes when you score too easily, you get spoiled. Keith? Bulk security. All right, here come the Nittany Lions up to the 21-yard line first down with Carter and Milne. The backs behind Kerry Collins. And Kerry on first down comes out throwing to the fullback. The ball is caught at about the 25. Mill, a 253-pound junior from Milne. Waterford, Pennsylvania. Both these fullbacks are juniors. Here's a look at the numbers in the first half. Uh, look at uh, Penn State. Rushing yards, 123. Passing about the same. They're balanced. For Oregon, 278 yards passing, only 16 rushing. Each has had a turnover, time of possession, a little bit in the favor of Oregon. John Whitman checks into the backfield now for the Lions. Second down and about seven. Collins again, throwing to the sideline. Good throw. Good throw, and the man under it is Freddie Scott, who probably, they're not going to call it uh, possession. He didn't have it when he went out of bounds. And there's a penalty flag waiting over here. But I think Scott will see the ball more in the second half than he did in the first. Here's a look at Penn State in the first half. They scored on their first possession, and they scored on their last possession. A thing to note there, they did not have very good field position. The best they had was on their own 28-yard line. The leaders, Collins, was 9 of 13 and 115. Carter, not much after that big first run, and Ingram led the receivers with four for 48 yards. So it's third down and a long six for Penn State. Here they come. Johnna Carter on a pitch, pops out of there, but they finally bring him down. They almost had him again. If you don't wrap Carter, you're not going to take him down. If Jeff Sherman finally got if him. Sherman doesn't make that tackle, he's the free safety. Everybody else had blitzed up through the holes, and he was the last line of defense. Yep. Otherwise, kajana has got another big another number. Daryl Kenny running for Penn State. All right, Herman O'Berry is waiting for Daryl Kenny's punt. Big series right there for the Oregon defense, I think. One fellow may be lined up in the neutral zone. Kick is out of there. Good. Oh, good that kick. is a very good kick. Berry retreats all the way to the 22-yard line. There's a penalty flag down. And O'Berry is taken down by Stephen Pitts. That's the second time that Pitts has been very prominent in kick coverage. Good kick and good coverage. And I think we've got a penalty coming here against the Oregon Ducks. That was a 50-yard punt and a loss of a yard on the return. Might very well have been a push in the back. But they're not indicating that, so they're... We'll finally get a call here after they've sorted it out for their meeting. We were the block in the back on the receiving team. Yep. First finish kick foul. We go from the end of the kick. Ten yards. First you can see the, the look of Rich Brooks. That's quite definitive. Here's a look at the possessions for Oregon. They had it eight times. They scored on their second possession and should have scored on their second last. They had it on the Penn State 33 and missed the field goal. Here are the leaders, O'Neill with a great first half, 278 yards. Whittle leads the rushers, and Wilcox and McLemore lead the receivers. They're just outside the 10-yard line for the first down after the penalty. And they give it to Whittle, and Whittle is taken down up around the 12. Todd Atkins, number 58 for Penn State, has been a very solid defensive performer for the Lions so far today. He's got a couple of sacks uh, under his belt already. But he's been there. He's yes. been there. Oh, no, no. I, yeah, he's exactly right. All the way right. around, yeah. <clears throat> Give him a yard on the carry. O'Neill flips it out to Whittle. Whittle looking for some help on the corner. Didn't get it. Picked up a couple of yards. And uh, again, Lynn Swan. Keith, you know Rich Brooks was very upset at the end of the first half 
when he didn't get a chance to kick the field goal, McLemore didn't get out of bounds. When I talked to him, he said, I'm not going to change anything we're doing on offense or defense. The kids are playing hard. They're playing strong. We just have to take advantage of our opportunities, and we didn't do that in the first half. And he says physically, he believes this young man can play with Penn State. Penn State's obviously bigger, but Oregon is going to be in the fight, and he believes they can win. They're Keith? quicker. Oregon's quicker. And they've got heart. Third down and six. They're one out of seven on third down conversions. O'Neill's got a problem. Now you need to throw it, but he can't do it. He can't pull that trigger well, in those circumstances. The reason he can't pull the trigger, there's nobody open, Keith. Nobody downfield. Nobody, nobody open. Normally when your quarterback scrambles, you got to go with him, and nobody went with him. Didn't have any choice but to run out of bounds. So Penn State ought to come out of this with pretty good field position. First, they get a 50-yard punt from Kenya. Oregon loses a yard on the return. Belden needs one of those uh, howitzers he hit to close the first half. Mike Archie standing back uh, at about his own 40. Belden's punt, not bad. And he's got Archie in a fair catch back at the 39. That's a very good point. Punt by the freshman from Arizona. A lot of champagne glasses have been used to prove how smooth a car can be at high speed. Surely, a toast is in order for a truck that can do the same. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. Business is the engine of society. Without it, there would be no jobs, no products, no competition, no advancements. Business is the engine of society. See how far it takes you. See how far it takes us all. This is the software that moves you forward. I know it's a new school, honey, but you'll make lots of friends. Attention class. Meet our new student, Timothy Hayes. Lunch break class. His name is Timmy. It's sort of a surprise. Hi. Timmy Hayes? Yes? Your pizzas are here. Pizza Hut announces two large one-topping pan pizzas for just 13 bucks. Anyone want some pizza? It's a class act. You love the stuff we made on Pizza Hut. Golf's big winners in 1994. Tee it up in the first battle of the new year. Don't miss the final round of the Mercedes Championship Sunday on ABC Sports. This is Penn State's best starting position for a possession of the ball game at their 40. First down, Freddie Scott, number 31. He has not seen the ball much today. He's in motion. Collins looking for him. There it is. And it's a first down. Right about the 50-yard line. Collins How'd you know that? I just think he's due. <laughs> he's a terrific pass receiver. And uh, they haven't used him much. And he's been open a lot. Well, they've been open. Both wide tackle. receivers have been open because, again, of the uh, seven and eight man front that they want to uh, not only blitz, but also stop the run of Kajana Carter. Whatever it is they're doing, can't be too bad, yeah. is it? That's right. 14 to 7 ballgame. Yeah, they're, they're in the ballgame. Mike Archie replacing Carter in the backfield. Goes in motion. Here's Terry Collins. You drop it off to uh, Archie looking for a screen. Got loose on the sidelines. And Jeff Sherman, the free safety, knocks him out. Collins passing to Mike Archie. Oh, they're airing it out Jeff here to start the, tackle. the second half of play. Randy Gantner, the offensive coordinator, was one of his concerns prior to the game was the blitz package of Oregon and how would they do it and would he be able to pick it up? Well, he's adjusted a little bit, as Lynn said. They talked to uh, Paterno. They're blitzing a little bit differently. They've had time to adjust to it. Ball is at the 33, first down. The Lions, they're faking it now. Give it to Archie. And they're still keyed to the run. You got 
Kenny Wheaton, number 20 now. He's the right cornerback or the nickelback, and he's at the bottom of the stack at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. They, they put Wheaton in, which is a fifth defensive back, and take out one of their linebackers. So it's a four defensive linemen, two and five uh, linebackers. And he's just as good a tackler as he is coverage guy. Second down and 10. Collins. Hit as he throws. The pass is incomplete. Pass intended for the tight end, Kyle Brady. And Kenny Wheaton jumped Collins Brady pretty well that time, and Kerry Collins Brady got flat. Incomplete. Knocked away by Tomorrow Kenny night, ABC, the new year, bringing new episodes of all your Tuesday favorites, Full House, Me and the Boys, Home Improvement, Grace Under Fire, and NYPD Blue. So it's a happy new year tomorrow night here on ABC. Third down and 10. because your business used AT&T. Which is why when it comes to savings, hundreds of thousands of businesses are demanding proof. MCI will analyze your AT&T bill and give you proof positive, written proof of how much your business can save by switching to MCI. So call MCI and see how much of this is yours. It's double wishbone suspension elevates your feel of the road. Its multi-valve engine and speed-sensitive steering elevate your sense of control, while its looks, well, they will elevate your mood. Introducing the all-new Dodge Avenger. It's more than just a car. It's an elevator. Red Dog here. Look at him. Making fools of himself. And for what? A pat on the head and a dog biscuit? What do you think of that? You got a mind of your own. Oh. Know what I'm saying? Do what's right for you. Hey, buddy. Nothing personal. Red Dog Beer. Bold yet smooth. Easy to drink. But I don't jump through hoops for nobody. Is Metavoid being hounded by a gypsy curse? I am not a person who responds to threats. And why would my gums all of a sudden start bleeding? An all-new blue. Tuesday, viewer discretion advised. Tom Osborne's cousin lives up there. <laughs> That's right up behind the Rose Bowl. <laughs> well, first it's never happened Oregon. that a team in first place won its postseason game was voted out of first place. Never happened. Down for the Oregon Ducks, the ball at the 25 yard line. Danny O'Neill back has time. Now they flush him, and he's going to pick up some. Got about seven yards on the play. Don't want to be running around too much and letting those big old boys like Geltheiser and uh, Jeff Perry jump on you. They'll, they'll flatten your tire. Well, Neil didn't. Uh didn't uh, realize that they had gone from a four-man line to a three, dropped yep. five men deep in the short zones and three deep behind them. So a 
think uh, Jerry Sandusky, just uh, defensive coordinator, moving his defenses around. Goes to another three-man line, and both outside linebackers puts. Dino Filio in the backfield now, and they run him up close Dino to the Filio 35. Depends on the spot whether or not he's got his first Ben down. Stewart making the tackle.
up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here they come. Passes away, and the pass is incomplete. Alex Bolden covering Freddie Scott. That's a pretty good matchup there. There's no inhibitions about Molden and O'Berry. They'll take you on, man, and run all over the field with you. Well, here's what you're getting. The linebacker is blitzing. You're going to have six guys coming. When you do that, everybody in the secondary is matched up. You see Sherman at the top of your screen is matched up. He throws the other way. You just have to get open. And Scott didn't get open. Somebody had a hold of him as he let the ball go, too. On third down, Kerry Collins has time to pump it, then takes a lick, completes the pass. First down, thrown to Jura Vicious. It was Jury Vicious who made the catch on the big play that set up the go-ahead touchdown. Now he comes up with another big play. And Jury Vicious, as you mentioned, is probably has gotten less playing time than all the other wide receivers. 6'5", he's 220 pounds. He's a redshirt freshman from Charleston, Ohio. And I think one of the reasons he's able to get open is because of his size, Keith. Yep. 6'5 and 220, as you mentioned, he can just, if he just positions himself inside the uh, corner, he's open. It's become Kerry Collins' ball game now, hasn't it? Yep. Back to throw again on first down to the sideline. The pass is complete to Mike Archie. And Archie has what appears to be another first down or very close to it. Mike Archie. It'll be on the Oregon side of the field near the 46-yard line. And as you mentioned, it's Collins' game now, and it really Can plays in the to tackle? the strength of the Ducks because their strength is their secondary. They've stopped Carter, Kajana Carter, other than that first run of the game. Their strength is in their secondary. They're forcing Collins to throw the ball against that secondary. Yeah, but somebody's got to get in the quarterback's face. The best secondary, secondary in the world isn't going to do much if you give that guy like that time to stand around and survey. That's, that's why the blitzing, the five yep. and six men come Gain to put pressure yards. because the defensive line is, is not the strength of this defensive team. The... Uh, size of Kerry Collins impressive though the Michigan game earlier this year when he shook big old Steve Morrison off his back and threw a rope for a pass completion he sold me right yeah, there yeah and he's about 235 or so pounds he stands 6'5 he's only been sacked five times this year that's testimony to those blue collar guys in front of him Archie and Whitman in the backfield second down Billions of years ago, the only place to get a nice gift 
was the airport. A good meal? The airport. Rent a wheel? The airport. That's why Thrifty Car Rental opened in your neighborhood. Now we're making it easier than ever before to rent really great wheels at very neighborly rates. And if you're at the airport, we're in that neighborhood too. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. ABC Sports coverage of the 1995 Rose Bowl, brought to you by Pizza Hut. you love the stuff we're made of. And the Chrysler Corporation and its divisions judge us by our performance. Oregon's ball, first down, Penn State's 17-yard line after Reggie Jordan's first interception. Rich Rule walked off the field. Gelheiser's is back for Penn State, having had an ankle retaped. And it's Whittle and Jones lined up behind Danny O'Neill. They've not been in the air yet in this half. By Jones, a fullback out of La Puente, California, and Gelsheiser is right there. You can hear that one all the way in Pomona as they ran together. Gelsheiser put on some other shoes. He gets some high tops on. Well, they retaped his uh, ankle, and, uh, and they are high tops, yes. No He's had play. ankle trouble, I think. Half like he put season. some white tape over those yeah. eye tops. Yep. There was nothing on that play. Nothing. So it is second down and ten. Oregon had 29 passes first half. None yet this half. O'Neill's pass to the corner. <laughs> Gotta be good. I don't think he came down in bounds. Kristen McLemore. He was carried out on the shoulders of a Penn State defender. The officials have signaled nothing. Yeah, he signaled touchdown. Where? The one man down there, the one official signaled touchdown. But you got to get a foot in bounds. This is not the NFL rule where if you're pushed out. Let's take a look. They carried him out. Clearly. I don't think he got a foot in. There, this is not the NFL where if you're carried out, the official judgment, if he doesn't get a foot in bounds on his own, he's out of bounds. It is a touchdown. It is a touchdown, folks. Here's the kick. And he just barely got it through. So Bellin's having a hard time with this place kicking stuff today. But we're tied at 14 with 4 minutes and 54 seconds to play in the third quarter. He's from the other side of the field. Macklemore, great leaping ability. He's clearly out of bounds, but it's also clear that they're carrying him. So <laughs> I still haven't seen anybody call touchdown. I could not, I still can't see well, I guess clearly. The man this standing is the best shot. The back whether corner did, whether yeah. one, of, one of his feet get down. Let's see. Right there, and I don't know. I, yeah, you know, close. he. I don't know if that official was looking. If that official was looking at the foot or not, but it was awfully close. Whew. Well, they're pretty exciting stuff. 14-14. <laughs> only one man threw up his hands, and I couldn't find him over yeah. there in the corner. So Oregon has pulled even with the Nittany Lions at 14, and will kick off now. Seven 
17-yard line. So that's a pickup for four yards. Carter's been pretty quiet since that big opening run. 32 yards, a couple of fumbles. They have really been on his case.
just going to throw the ball too high and right to Penzenic. It's a little play action. They're trying to get the safety to bite. Penzenic is staying deep, deep middle. The ball is overthrown. Yeah, that was that was Oregon's mistake. No question about it. It was a mistake by Danny. He just threw the ball. Tried to force it. Tried yep. to force it. Too many white shirts. And here's Penn State knocking on the door. Pass. From the Back it comes to Collins. Collins is hit just as he catches the ball. And he will pick up a couple of yards as Herman O'Berry spelled that one coming. Yeah. See, Mike Archie had a touchdown pass earlier in the season, you know, and he's been wolfing that pretty good. Well, he's two for two. <laughs> and both of them were for touchdowns. Uh, <laughs> so he's saying, oh, shucks. He said, uh, he says, Todd, I mean, Kerry College, you got to get in the end zone here. Come on. You're running, moves. You're running my average. It'll be second down and eight for the Lions at the Oregon 11-yard line. Ducks defense needs to get its back up right here. Kajana Carter and Brian Milne in the backfield, and that's stuck in motion. And it's Carter with the ball. Oh, I tell you, he is quick in traffic. Kajana Carter, the ball carrier. Great, great balance. Big, German. thick, strong legs. He's the best I've seen, Keith. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of them this year, but uh, I mean, he's got a good offensive line, and he's got a tight end that can block, and he's got fullbacks that can block. Conlon gets rid of Asher, but this kid, he reminds me of Emmett Smith. He is strong, yep, and he is built yep. low to the ground. I mean, Penn State has blockers everywhere. The tight end can block, the fullbacks can block, and tailback benefits from all of that. It is first and goal first for Penn down. State at the Oregon 3. 21-14, Nittany Lions have the lead as we head toward the end of the third quarter. Defense, Penn State defense is the difference in this game. Now, it was the offense early on. This is Carter. Total. 
people call it hype, but I guess that's what it was. But it was a wearing experience for everybody involved as, uh, between the two undefeated teams, Nebraska, Tom Osborne, Penn State, Joe Paterno. I mean, these are, are two of the highest quality people in the game of college football. Class people. That ball is thrown right through the hands of Dameron Ricketts. And uh, they're friends. So I asked Joe the other day at a quiet moment uh, his feelings about Nebraska winning in the Orange Bowl against Miami. And here's what he said. The press can say what they want, newspaper people, television, anybody can say what they want, but nobody can take away from the fact that we do what, what we set out to do, and that was to win all our football games, get to the Rose Bowl, and if we can, win the Rose Bowl. And, you know, my mom, when I was a kid growing up, when the kids used to call me, in the neighborhood we were in, they'd call me WAP and things like that, and, and I'd come home crying, my mom would used to say to me, nobody can make you feel inferior unless you let them. And nobody can take a national championship away from us if we win all our football games, because we're going to feel as if we're national champions. And that's the way he feels. That's what he said all along. Now, Tom Osborne and his Nebraska Cornhuskers appear that they're going to get the vote. You heard what Tom said earlier today. He has an even keel about it. He doesn't have control of it. He's not involved in a game that'll decide it. He's got to wait for people to cast balance. 32 yard line. And O'Neill back. Throws to Whittle. Whittle's in trouble with Willie Smith. Gets away from him, but steps out of bounds. Steps out of bounds right about the line of scrimmage. Well, I don't know. All my feelings, and I've made it as clear as I can make it. I think this would have been a great year to have had four teams, top four teams, after the bowl games play two weeks. And you could have at least had a test run. Got some feeling about it. Well, you've got the uh, you've got the coalition set up this year, and next year it's going to be the alliance, no where they're trying to get the top teams to play each other. Yeah. The problem is that the Rose Bowl is not involved in the alliance. You know, Keith. I mean, I'm not against a playoff, but if you can convince me that it wouldn't hurt the bowl system as we know it today, this is a great bowl. Yes, it is. We've got a hundred and over a. That's Whittle with the ball, and he's got an Oregon first down up on the 45 yard line. And over 100,000 people here today. Pass, but but you tell goal. me this if Penn State, Tackle the fans, or the Oregon, Oregon fans, if, they, if Penn State was number two like they are, and there was going to be another game next week between the two undefeated teams, if Penn State came out of this in Nebraska, and you were back in Pennsylvania, and you couldn't afford two trips. yard game, first and ten. And the championship game was going to be wherever, in New Orleans or in Miami or wherever. You couldn't afford two trips. All you could afford was one trip. Would this stadium be full, or would the one next week and not affect the bowl game? That's a defensive play by the Penn State Nittany Lions, Terry Killens, who came pouring in on a bull rush and knocked the Oregon man down Terry back at the 40-yard line. Well, I don't, I don't know. The only thing, the problem I got with it is I don't want to see it, the control of things get in the hands of bowl promoters. I think the college people have still got to keep control of it. And uh, that's the first thing I look at. As we come down to the end of the third quarter, we'll be back with more of the 95 Rose Bowl after this message and the word from our ABC station. Auto registration in the green line. License renewal. Gee, I love renewing my license. What a happy place. Or is it these new Doritos? It's great here. Such friendly service. All these smiling faces. Or is it the chill? Everyone's just so eager to help. I wish I could do this more often. New Doritos tortilla chips. So good they flavor the way you look at life. Isn't bureaucracy beautiful? When we asked two-time Indy winner Emerson Fittipaldi to be involved in the development of the Chrysler Cirrus, it wasn't to have him help sell the car. It was to have him help refine it. He pushed it to the limits around the track. He made suggestions. The engineers listened. The engineers made suggestions, and he listened. The result of this collaboration is a specially modified double wishbone suspension system unlike any other on the road today. The Chrysler Cirrus, Motor Trend's car of the year. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. Day one is back with Sawyer and Sawyer from ABC News. Great stories well told. Day one returns Thursday at 10, 9 central. Come join the millions sold on Dodge. 
1994 was our best retail sales year ever. Over one million new Dodges were sold. So we're celebrating. Thanks a million. Get a $700 discount on select Ram diesels. Thanks a million. Or check out impressive values on Dodge Dakota. Come join the millions sold on Dodge. Going on now at your Dodge dealer. Hurry in today. To a seven-year-old, velocity, mass, and momentum aren't as interesting as the song on the radio. And crash test dummies don't go on family vacations. But the people who buy Volkswagen Jettas do. That's why the new Jetta has dual airbags, front and rear crumple zones, side impact beams, and a rigid passenger safety cage. Velocity, mass, and momentum don't mean much to children, and we plan on keeping it that way. The world's most powerful weather radar, Action Radar, only on Action News. We go to the final 15 minutes, and it's put-up time for the Oregon Ducks. They're looking at second down and 16. They trail 28 to 14. They have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Danny O'Neill back. Has pretty good protection. His pass is away to Kristen McLemore. And McLemore gets a pretty good gain out of it before he is knocked out on the Penn State side of the field. But if you like offense, uh, you'll like uh, these numbers, uh, big numbers, uh, everywhere you look, uh, total number of plays. Interesting one right here for Oregon. 336 yards passing is the most against any opponent for uh, Penn State this year. Two turnovers, both of them have led to the opponent scoring one touchdown. Third down and four. Third and four. O'Neill's pass to McLemore in the middle of the field. And he's got a first down as he's inside the 30. Kristen McLemore from Huntington Beach, California. Uh, one of the best routes in college football, pro football, is a slant about three, three steps down and he doesn't really break it off. He doesn't have to because Penn State playing a three deep zone. The slants are there. And that was a good throw by O'Neill to, to McLemore. Eight catches, 80 yards for Chris. Same thing, except misses Ricketts. He missed Cameron Ricketts with it. Threw it a little quickly, maybe. Where it'll be second down and 10. The ball is at the Penn State 28 yard line. It's been a tough, hard football game. You know, Rich Brooks has done a great job. The, the preseason polls, the, the people who were supposed to know, had him picked last and next to last uh, in the uh, Pac-10 conference. They are the Cinderella team, unquestionably. They beat Southern Cal, they beat Arizona and Washington to get here. O'Neill doesn't have anybody to throw to. Now throws it to the ground. And then they all look around. <laughs>
There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see. If it's gonna get done, it's up to you and to me. And there's no place that I'd rather be. Come on, along, and head for the mountains of Bush. Head for the mountains, it's cold and it's smooth, and it's waiting for you. Come on, head for the mountains of Bush. reinvented the minivan in three words. First, we widened it, giving you the widest stance for secure handling. Next, we made it big on safety with standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Then we added the most room of all leading minivans for all your cargo and up to seven passengers. And by sweeping away the old ideas, Ford created Windstar, a minivan like no other. The future belongs to the new Windstar. Wednesday, take a peek at an all-new Roseanne. I can't stop looking. They're completely naked all the time. Sometimes he wears a hat. An all-new Roseanne Wednesday on ABC. There's a look at the field goal. Good snap, good hold. Belden gets it up. It's just going to hit the upright. Three wide rights. There's Rich Brooks. They may not be the biggest or the strongest or the fastest, but I think that right there shows you why Rich Brooks has been a successful coach for a long time, cares about his kids, and he'll be back. Harry Collins wanted to let it go. Now he does. He's got Bobby Ingram back there, and it is incomplete. And he was in a full-scale duel with Jeff Sherman, Collins the free safety. Collins pass intended for Bobby Ingram, incomplete. I went up there Jeff Sherman on the and play. spent a day with him, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I can say over the years, all the games that, that I've been involved in, the Joe Paterno football games, I have never failed to enjoy being around his team. Yeah. It's been such a, a delightful week. I, I'll, never, I'll never get the image of those two dancing. Joe with Sue at the director's <laughs> dinner the other night, and Rich with his wife, Karen. And they were the only two on the dance floor. And then Joe went over and switched, traded wives, and they danced for a while. And everybody there applauded. Well, it's supposed to be a festival. That's why the rose or the, the ball game, the bull games, are perhaps important in the sense that they are supposed to be festival. But we insist on heaping all manners of, of hype and pressure on top of the kids, and it's pretty hard sometimes to have a festival now when uh, the media insists on loading them up. Third down and seven. Defensive back did his job. He had him covered. Darrell Kenny is on the field. 42, 36, 39, and 50. Now here's Pat Johnson, the speed burner for Oregon, back for the first time today as a kick returner. I think this is part of his future, too, because he has such speed. Once he learns to play the game, look out. V6 that runs 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. Outstanding safety features from dual airbags to a steel safety shell. Even a filtration system that removes virtually all dust and pollen from the air. The totally new Ford Contour. Well equipped for just $14,655. A week of scout camp. How hard could it be? Yeah! I'm your new troop leader. We're gonna chop wood and dig a ditch. From here to there. Any questions?
Bet you can't eat just one. Kid, I once went in that dire week without breathing. New Wavy Lay's Hidden Valley Ranch flavor. Bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> Keeper! Hidden Valley's a special ranch. Wavy Lay's are special potato chips. Is that Johnson's team behind us? Exactly. Are they members of Hertz Number One Club Gold? Exactly. Are we members of Hertz Number not, One? Not, not exactly. So thanks to Hertz, they're gonna get to the meeting on time. And we'll be late. So exactly what'll I tell the boss? Hmm? In rent a car, there's Hertz, and there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. And then a dog in the cargo hold ate our presentation. <laughs> Is he buying it? <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> The U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl is next on ABC. Bobby Bowden and Steve Spurrier met at the 40-yard line just moments ago. We'll be underway. It's a rematch. Florida and Florida State. Right now, back we go to Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy. All right, Brett. You guys are in for some fun down there in Newlands tonight, I think. 28-14 here, Penn State, Oregon with the ball now at their own 27-yard line. Dino Filio, the single back for the Ducks. Daddy O'Neill. Not much on the play as Tony Pittman stepped right up on Filio in a hurry. The Big Ten, of course, trying to win their third in a row against the Pac-10. If the Nittany Lions uh, close the door on this one. I know some of you perhaps wondering uh, about the future of Kajana Carter. Nobody knows what it is. Not even Kajana, perhaps, at this point in time. O'Neill steps away from the pressure. Turns it upfield and runs for very close to the first down. Depends on where they give him the mark. May not have given him the first down. Joe Paternal telling us uh, couple days ago tackle. that after the season he intends to sit down with Kajana and his mother and hash it over a little bit. Also, he wears red shirt in his first. This is his yeah. fourth year in school. Yeah. Interesting as they bring the chains on that Joe Paterno has had unbeaten teams in 1968 that finished second, 1969 that finished second in the national polls I'm talking about. It is a first down by just a smidgen. 1973 an unbeaten team finished fifth. 1986 they finally got one. But here he is again going to probably finish the season undefeated and finish second. Well, the but, national poll. Yeah, he, but he also won a national championship when he lost a game one year. That's true. Yeah, in 82. That's Kristen McLemore with the ball. And a pickup of close to seven, eight yards. The amazing thing about Joe, in his 29 years, and this is his 29th season as head coach at Penn State, he has had seven undefeated regular seasons where he's gone through the regular season. Well, that 78 team was a great yards. team. Chuck Cusino, uh, Mike Kuhlman, Matt Sui, and all those guys, you know, lost to Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. One of the great college football games of all time. Second down and four, short four. There's the first down. It's still y'all. And Dino moves it to the Penn State side of the field, the 48 yard line. O'Neill is now over 400 yards in total offense. There's a look from up above, the Goodyear flip. Billy on number 12, just going to slide out. O'Neill does a nice job of setting this up. And then the speed burner. <laughs> Ball loose. Didn't, he came away, he came off the snap, didn't stay down under it, and the uh, ball got loose. And O'Neill covers it. Danny is saying, get that building off of me. Ball recovered by Danny O'Neill. Also on that play of about four yards. Just a good three. Second down and 13, 12, 10 to play in the game. 28, 14, the ball is slapped down. Intended for Kristen McLemore and Willie Smith dropping off. The Neil outside Dennis linebacker knocked it down. Ricketts. So it'll bring up third Smith. and 13. Saturday, January 14, season premiere of the Professional Bowlers Tour. Begins with the AC Delco Classic. Then the national champion Razorbacks of Arkansas meet Auburn. Duke plays Virginia. He'll have other regional games as Pizza Hut College basketball begins January 14 here on ABC Sports. Third down, big play here for the Ducks. Your boy Cody. What a good play by Phil Yavoa Cody from Montreal. He's going to beat the back.
back from the left side. Watches Philly on number 12, steps out the block. The first problem is he didn't step close enough to the line of scrimmage. Secondly, he tried to cut him, and Yaboa Cody, great uh, athletic Matt ability, Belden just jumps over him and takes him down with one hand. And they'll punt. Belden. Archie waiting. Just for this month. Then we'd better hurry up. Monday. The day we get the world out of bed with a wake-up call of traffic horns, school bells, and factory whistles. 
and one truck is perfect for a busy day like today. Ford F-Series, with the most powerful diesel pickup engine ever, the convenience of a convertible console seat, and the safety of a standard airbag. More reasons why Ford F-Series is the best-selling truck 17 years running. And that's a lot of Mondays. There are the most important numbers you need to know. The time remaining and the score of the ball game. It is first down for the Oregon Ducks at their own 46-yard line. Danny O'Neill quickly to Ricketts. Cameron Ricketts running in the middle of the field. We'll pick up. Better part of seven yards. O'Neill has 35 completions now, which is a new row 34 completions, which is a new Rose Bowl record. That uh, moves him past Ron Vanderkellen in that 1963 shootout between uh, USC and Wisconsin. Here's Whittle, and Whittle getting down the sidelines for a big play and a first down at the Penn State 31 yard line. Getting the ball on screen plays to his, his best and fastest players. Ricketts on one play and Whittle on another. He now totals 405 yards and that also passes Ron Van to get out. There's plenty of time left in this ball game. 1995 Rose Bowl brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Hidden Valley Ranch flavor Wavy Lay. That you can't eat just one. I got one more after this play. O'Neill throws that one intended for Kristen McLemore thrown behind him and Chris really didn't have a chance to catch it. And the Digital Equipment Corporation, makers of the new digital high note Collins ultra defending. notebook computer. Those are our sponsors. Time remaining is 9.08 in the ball game. Look at those numbers. He's only missed 13 passes. Terry Killen. Killens with a great play. O'Neill's pass broken up by. They've had some great linebackers here, Keith. Yeah, that Killens is going to be a man. Yeah, he plays behind Willie Smith. Remember a linebacker that was at Penn State that didn't get much uh, notoriety until he got out of the Penn State, and that was Jack Ham. Yep. It's just the system. Once they get out of there, boy, they. And they turn them loose. Fourth down, they're going. Ball is out on the 35. Fourth and 14. Oregon doesn't use the shotgun. Full rush, pass away, passes incomplete. Kristen McLemore had his hands on it. Ball was just a little too high for him to reel it in. That's 50 pass attempts now for Danny O'Neill, and that also beats a Ron Vandekellen record. Coming from your right side, man coverage. He's well covered, but look at the effort of McLemore. That's Brian Miller. First and 10, he 10 just state. gets this off. Look at the effort put forth here. Almost put that thing in his pocket, didn't he? He would have caught it if Miller hadn't have shaken it loose. Yep. Mike Archie now is in the backfield with Brian take over at their own 35-yard line and Mill with a strong run of six yards as a penalty flag is thrown on the far side of the field. And the clock stops at 8.49 to play in the game. Offsides, Oregon. You know, the, the story the other day was that uh, the Penn State now, they have a huge number of alumni here in the Southern California area, and someone said that they have the largest dues-paying alumni association.
Association in the country. And uh, the story is, of course, that uh, Michigan has the... They used to tell me Michigan did. Yeah. ...the largest number of living alumni, but not necessarily dues-paying alumni. Oh, I see. Well, some of those <laughs> Michigan guys got short arms. They're not paying their dues. <laughs> well, they're coming into this ball game. A note we alluded to a long time ago that uh, Joe Paterno was even with Paul Bryant in postseason bowl game wins. And if his team wins this one today, and it appears kind of likely now, that he is going to pass Paul Bryant's record. So it's been quite a day of records in this 81st Rose Bowl game. Now the big old fullbacks, Milne and Whitman, are going to start beating on uh, the defenders of Oregon. Colorado, jump Notre Dame, 41 to 24. Huh? McCartney goes out a winner. We wish him well, nothing but the best. Rick Neuheisel steps in behind him. He one of the Boy youngest. Game. There you go, Lick. He didn't know what, let's get another shot of that. You know, if you didn't know who was at the top of that, uh, it's almost becoming a trademark. Well, do you know why he wears his Oh, pencil? I sure do. I saw Sue the other night, and she told me that people from getting back, back in the early 60s when he was an assistant coach, he wore his best britches, and he'd get them dirty. Right. Come home dirty, and she'd say, roll them up. And you know, <laughs> you know what? And I, Coaches are superstitious as all get out, and he probably was winning, and he just, because I'm sure he doesn't wear his best britches now. He probably wears some coaching pants from the issue there at Penn State. But he gets superstitious, and they just don't change. Milne goes up the middle, picks up the first down. And at eight minutes to play in a ball game, they can move the chains again. Wednesday night is special on ABC this week. You've got three of TV's funniest ladies and two great hours of comedy, Roseanne, Grace, another Roseanne, and then Ellen, starting at 8, 7 Central. Sam Donaldson, Diane Sawyer will be at Wednesday with a new primetime live in its new yard. night. All of it Wednesday night here on ABC. Wisconsin last year and then Oregon yep. this year and Penn yep. State. Yep. 
They put up a great big tent outside the Rose Bowl for those who couldn't get tickets. This was a tough ticket this year. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Big, uh, one of those big screens. Three yards on the play. So if you just want to come to this area and be a part of the ambiance, not get inside with a ticket, but, you know, hang around. It's and ain't a bad place to hang around. That's right. It's not shaking. 43-yard <laughs> field goal try, a lot of leg, it's good. Brett Conway from 43 makes it a 31-14 ball game, Penn State. The deal of the year on Ford Taurus is now even better because your lease payment is now even lower. Just $237 a month for 24 months on Taurus sedan or wagon. Or you can choose low 2.9% financing or $750 cash back. Don't wait to take advantage of these three great offers on Taurus sedan and wagon because the deal that makes the best-selling car in America an even greater value ends January 4th. Ford Taurus. Gosh, the sky is so clear. Hey, look, a shooting star. That means you're gonna go on a trip. No, it doesn't. It means you're supposed to make a wish. Hey, Gene, what would you wish for? Well, I wish my radio would work better. No, really. Well, I wish I could go to some really neat places. I'm going to St. Louis with my cousins. Shh! And I want to go to college and learn about things you kind of don't understand. And I'd like to be in a ticker tape parade and meet a president. And, and I'd like to be able to fly. For over 150 years, America's universities have given kids from everywhere the chance to pursue their dreams through an education. And what their dreams have given back to us is immeasurable. Gosh, Gene, what are you going to ask for next? The moon? Thank you. 
with the Kristen McLemore. Jason Collins so, making the tackle. Uh, let's see what they decide to do on fourth down, way back here on their end of the field. If they go for it and don't get it, then they've pretty well conceded points to Penn State at the 4.45 to play yeah, in the well, ball game. You're down 17 with four minutes to play. Doesn't matter, does it? Look out. Yaboa Cody. Tell Yaboa Cody. And Penn State will own the football down around the Oregon 13-yard line. Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator, has finally found an area where he can, can blitz and get in and sack. There's Sandusky. That's the first time Gary has had a smile. Yes. Since he came west. From the top of the screen, one of the outside linebackers, Yaboa Cody and Willie Smith. Left side, the guard tries to get out. That's Reed, 71. Smith sacking him and Yaboa Cody. Michigan. That was the lowest they've scored. They've reached that now. They've got 31, and it looks like they may get more. Making the tackle. That was John Whitman carrying the ball, fullback. He's at 238 pounds, and Brian Mill, 253 pounds. And they can line Eight those two yards. up in a bull backfield and make it life real hard for you. What I enjoy is when they get on the goal line, they got both fullbacks in the game, Whitman and Mill. And they take the the high uh, the high falutin uh, running back Kajana Carter, take him out of the backfield and put him on the wing and let him block for the two big backs. All at the nine yard line, they give it to Whitman. He's down to the goal line, but not in. Oh, they call him in. He tumbles over. I thought he was short. I thought he was too, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. No. will finish the season scoring 51 straight times when they have been in what is called the red zone. <laughs> He's down a yard short of the goal. Uh, they gave him six there. He was down. I don't, I don't think they gave him. Maybe they gave him that one play earlier. They would have got Mike it. Barniger is in for the extra point try, number 88. Mike Barniger. So he gets a chance to fuck one up. And through. So it is now in the bank at 4.24 to play in the game. Penn State 38 and Oregon 14. And Joe Paterno is on his way to his 16th postseason bowl win, which takes him past Paul William Bryant. Good friends, those two. I talked to Joe about what he thought he could accomplish and what he now has, in fact, accomplished, and that's pass Barry Bryant. You know, when 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 Paul was alive, Paul was a for some reason or other took a, took an interest in me in my career. That was a big help to me. Uh, he'd call me every once in a while about what about I was making, my contract, and try to give me some advice. He had me down to a couple of coaches' clinics down there, and I, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd love to be able to say, hey, I did something Paul Bryant didn't do. Yeah, I would. I'd be honest with you. And not, not in the sense of personal, because I think he's up, he's probably up there saying that little, little whippersnapper from Brooklyn, you know, kind of thing. But he's done it. He has 16 wins in the postseason. Kicks it. Aye. In the air. A lot of air. Ball is taken by Whittle at about the six yard line. And he's across the 25. Now Ricky the Ducks Whittle can take another shot at off. it. But I think the Dad issue has been resolved. And, and you got to give the coaching staff credit and the players, Keith, for, for having known what the result was last night. Nebraska won. Hey, we're number one. You got to give us at least one of them. You got to give at least one of them. We got, we're number one. We're number one. one of, at least one of them. We're number one. You got to give it to us. John, we don't score. have a vote. We're going to score against Game Green defense. Well, there was a little uh, lobbying for some votes. <laughs> I'm just going to say the players and the coaches.
edges of Penn State came out and, and took care of business. And Josh Wilcox made that catch, Danny so he's all right, Mama. Completed the Josh, Wilcox. Josh got himself a tattoo, though, and his mama Marlon wasn't too happy about that. She was, his Brian younger brother, Gilles incidentally, uh, is quite a quarterback out of high school in Junction City, Oregon, and just this past week committed to going to school at Oregon. So the Wilcox name carries on at the University of Oregon. That's the first down as Cameron Ricketts makes the catch and moves it over to the Penn State side of the field. Keith, I'll ask you a question. This Penn State offense is uh, lead the nation in uh, total offense and scoring. What's the best offense you've seen this year? This one, probably. Florida, Colorado. Oh, I like this one. Florida State. I'll tell you why I like this one. I like this one because of the balance. Run and pass. Yep. 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 Even though Oregon has controlled the passing game relatively well, I mean, I, you can't you can't see Juravicious coming in and making the big play that the two big plays yeah. he made. You don't expect it. But at the same time, give Danny O'Neill all the credit yeah. in the world for doing what he's done today. Yeah. Penn State averaging 250 yards a game on the ground and 270 yards through the air. How about the most exciting game we had this year? End of the year. This is Whittle down the sideline. Ducks haven't quit. They sure have at the 25-yard line. I thought the SEC championship game was pretty good. Great game, wasn't it? Yep. How about the... Uh, yeah, Florida, Florida State's coming up. Uh, a rematch is coming up uh, right after this game, and there you are. USF and G uh, Insurance Sugar Bowl game. Yep. And how about that uh, show up in Ann Arbor between Colorado, Colorado and Michigan? Uh -huh. How about the most exciting play of the year? Well, you got to go with that catch uh, in the Michigan, Colorado, I suppose. Yeah, it was. Um, I'll tell you, there's a play though that was made in the Auburn, Alabama game. And I went back and looked just to make sure that I had not Again, been deceived by my own eyes. The Damian Jeffries, the where he jumps up in the air, oh, yeah. slapped the ball, yeah. no intercepted the pass the after putting pressure yeah. on, on Nick. That was a pretty good football play. But uh, how about uh, how about some of the play calling in that game with Spurrier? Uh, Spurrier making some of those calls. That was not bad. How about the best individual performance? I give you a clue, my vote, Texas Colorado game. Yeah, some fellow named Salam. Salam. <laughs> <laughs> Over 300 yards rushing, wasn't yeah. it? Something like that. And part of it with a mild concussion. Yeah. Uh, not bad. You know, one thing he's supposed to make his announcement shortly. Yeah. Isn't he? Well, I don't think Oregon ought to hang their hat. Hang their head. They, 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 season when they were going to the end zone incomplete that's a good defensive play Pat Johnson the speedster was down there but it was a very good uh, play by the Penn State defender from behind the offense Brian Miller I think is the man who came across to make the play top on. right you're right yep. Miller 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 went to the same high school as Joel Montana and uh, yes, and, uh, and uh, baseball's Ken Griffey Sr. That's Josh Wilcox again with another catch. So Josh had a huge first quarter, big first half, got rattled around some and was quiet in the third quarter, but now he's showing up again. But the man who did the thing for Penn State here in the second half of play, five his name's Sandusky. The way he moved and the adjustments he had his defense make. Yeah. That's Wilcox again for the first down. He's a cross pass to Marker. No. And he's got his first down. Keith, there was a time during this season that Penn State and Nebraska were split number one. So one was a one and one poll, and it was uh, going into the first week in November. In fact, Penn State was playing at Indiana. Uh, they ended up winning the game 35 to 29, but there were two late touchdowns by Indiana in the last two minutes, and one of them was a Hail Mary. And after that point, Nebraska was number one in both polls. And prior to that, uh, it was a split poll. So, uh, 
Peel through that one away. Yeah. Yep. Incomplete but, uh, intended for Josh Wilcox. Well, I, you know, my feeling on that is there was is quite a gap in both of the polls between first and second, first place vote, right? Now, if all of a sudden you get a big flip-flop in one of the polls, then what those guys are admitting is they've been wrong all along. Well, I don't think you're going to see that. I don't think you'll be see that much of a flip-flop. Penn State had some problems on the road. They had problems at Illinois. Whittle trying to find his way down the sideline. And he is finally pounded down at about the five-yard line. I like the gun. Looked like he might get in for six. I like the fight of this young uh, Oregon Jerry team. Killens. It is a young team. Yes, it is. Uh, O'Neal won't tackle. be back. Uh, but, Graziani uh, is waiting in the wings. Yes, he is. Um, Tony Graziani. They lose the fullback, Jones. They lose O'Neal. And one offensive lineman, and the rest of them will be back. He was the young fellow that came down to the Coliseum and beat USC. Yes, he did. The left-hander, sidewinder. Left yeah. Got a big frame. He might put on some weight, too. Third down and very, very short. Uh -oh. Whittle didn't get it. Now, in second effort, he's going to get it. Look at him ride the back of that big old offensive side. Martin and company. Tossi Malapai. So they'll have their first down, it appears, and if so, that'll stop your clock at 2.57, and it'll be first down and goal Oregon at the Penn State 3. It won't matter much in the ultimate outcome, but it will matter to the Oregon Ducks and their faithful. O'Neill throws beyond the end zone, incomplete. McLemore and Tristan as well off the field. Lamore has 10 catches for 103 yards. Wilcox, 10 catches for 130 yards. Ricketts, 7 catches for 74 yards. Phil Yaw, 6 catches for 80 yards. Then mix in the others. Justin McLemore, Kristen McLemore, set a record uh, with his 20th touchdown reception of his career. That moved him ahead of uh, Bobby Moore, or you may know him as Ahmad Rashad. What old touchdown. Ricky Weddle scampers in for six. This is not insignificant points that uh, Oregon is putting on the board either because the kids that are coming back to this program next year will remember that they fought to the final bell at this Rose Bowl game and they'll want to come back. Rich Brooks is kind of standing in awe of all of his new friends until they all found out there were no tickets available. <laughs> Going for two. McLemore didn't get in. He did not get in. And Zinnick was defending on the play. If there is a Walter Mitty in this ball game today, it would be Chuck Penzenic. First start. Nobody knew how to pronounce his name hardly. Joe probably had to look it up. Started him at free safety. He was a quarterback uh, before all the injuries hit. Wonderful. That's one of the. To me, that's one of the great things about college athletics. Again, let come me in and have a day like Joe. And Joe was saying, you know, he'll probably make some mistakes and we'll probably have to live with it. But, you know, he's going to do all right the majority of the time. Well, he's intercepted two balls. He's uh, made some key plays on other balls, made some nice tackles. These two coaches uh, getting votes in several different polls for coach of the year, Rich Brooks getting in some of the polls and the ones that didn't vote for Rich, uh, certainly uh, Joe Paterno got the, got the rest of them. He should. Matt Belden kicking, kicking off for Oregon. How about, uh, how about tough luck player of the year? A guy that maybe got hurt. Uh, well, I think Tyrone Wheatley had a tough year. Wheatley did have a tough year. Tommy
Tommy Frazier. How about Tommy Frazier? Tommy Frazier. How about he ended it. Uh, yeah. He had a considerable grand passion. Yeah. How about Jerry Copeland at uh, Tennessee? Yeah, that's the over. Yeah. Outside kick. Penn State covers it. And the Nittany Lions have the ball at the 45 of Oregon. And it looked like Bobby Ingram probably was the man on the ball. J.J. Stokes uh, at USC. I mean, it's UCLA. UCLA. Yeah. But, you know, the heartbreak of heartbreaks had to be Jerry Colvin right here yeah. in, this, in the Rose Bowl against UCLA. That was really... Waited his turn behind... Uh, Ken Penn State. Heath Schuler, fifth-year senior. He finally got his chance to play. Here goes Carter. And Kajana Carter is out of bounds at the 34-yard line. 38 to 20. And uh, the Penn State front liners are still in there. I think they'd get some of the... Uh, backups in there to get a little playing time in the Rose Bowl, huh? Well, looks, looks like was... Wally Richardson may be the heir apparent. Yep. Graziani, the heir apparent from Oregon. Necessarily so. And state uh, offense doesn't lose too many players either. Huh? This is Brian Mill. the ball carrier. Both fullbacks are back. Both Ingram and Scott, the wide receivers, are back. Buddy Scott's only Jeremy a sophomore. Asher, the only Chris Campbell's only a sophomore. They lose one offensive lineman. That's the center. Carter is a redshirt junior. He might be back. Of course, they lose Brady. I got one other thing for you, Keith. One, I worked with you for a long time here, seven, eight years. Uh, most memorable moments. When? This year. This year? Yeah. Uh, of the year. It sticks out in my mind like it was the... Well, I fell down on the floor the night at the Coliseum when you got stuck in the elevator. I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, well, no, no. Well, <laughs> well that was... A, I was going to talk about the same game, but something a little bit different. <laughs> when all the power went out, <laughs> and I'm watching you broadcast with a telephone. Well, oh. I've done that before. Oh, boy. <laughs> I said, here is the main man, Mr. College Football, doing a broadcast on a telephone. <laughs> Worked. I'll never forget that. <laughs> oh, boy. 24-yard line. Here goes uh, Milton the other way, and they're just pounding now, just just pounding as we come up on a minute and 20 to play. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich, who also produced today's game, who also produced a game in Green Bay on Saturday, and he's crazy. <laughs> he's working pretty hard. Associate coordinating producer for college football is Jim Ressler, directed by Drew Essekoff, who was also running around all over the country this weekend. Our technical director, Gary, yeah, you be crazy too. Technical director, Gary Larkins. Associate Director Bruce Clark, Production Manager Joe Alvarado, our Technical Operations Managers, play stopped in the middle, Claude Phipps and uh, Jerry Reuter, Assistants to the Producer Steve Schunk and Brady Bass, Statistician Dave Burnson, our Spotter Todd Berry, our Computer Stats by Mark Amento, and our Sideline Coordinator Doug Johnson. I'm Keith Jackson, working with Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, who worked in Miami last Saturday. I feel like I'm very lucky. I've had it pretty easy this past weekend. Wally Richardson is now in at quarterback for Penn State. Final seconds ticking away. This will do it. This is Stephen Pitts. Stephen Pitts. And the game is over. The Penn State Nittany Lions defeat the Oregon Ducks 38 to 20 and untied, undefeated Penn State Nittany Lions. Len Swan will try to get a word with him when we come back. Introducing Ford Contour. Goal, a world call for the 21st century. Example, the advanced Quadralink rear suspension. It was designed to allow rear wheels to adjust in sync with the front, giving Contour precise control in cornering and braking. Then it was put through two million miles of rigorous testing just to make sure. The totally new Ford Contour. 
well equipped for just $14,655. You can't play in the Super Bowl, but Edge can get you closer than ever in the Edge Ultimate Super Bowl Instant Win Game. If you win, you and a friend will head to the sidelines with NFL Films on an all-expense-paid trip to Super Bowl XXIX in Miami. Just look for this ad in most Sunday papers January 15th for your chance to win instantly. The Edge Ultimate Super Bowl Instant Win Game. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's The Edge. Tylenol has been my pain reliever for as long as I can remember. I counted on it when I was working and when I became a mom. But since I started competing in triathlons, I get aches and pains in places I never knew I had. So now I use Tylenol even more. It's my doctor's recommendation for safe, effective pain relief. She really believes in it. I count on Tylenol. I trust it. Tylenol, the pain reliever doctors recommend and hospitals use most. Imagine a rent-a-car company that will pick you up right at your door. That's Enterprise. Call us. We'll arrange to come to you. Take you back to our office, and you're on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Shake it. No dandruff. You've got Selsun power. Brush it. No flakes. You've got Selsun power with Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it number one over all leading brands. Dandruff problem? No way. You've got Selsun power. Here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, the final score, Penn State 38, Oregon 20. Yes. And for the presentation of the trophy, president of the Tournament of Roses, Mike Ward, with head coach, Joe Paterno. Mike. Joe, on behalf of the Tournament of Roses, city of Pasadena, a great day for the Big Ten. We are so pleased and happy to have you here for the first time. Let me help give you this trophy. Joe, Joe. congratulations on that win. It's your second year in the Big Ten. Some people were concerned you'd win this Rose Bowl trophy the first year. It just took you one extra one. Well, that's, it's a nice to hear that kind of stuff, but uh, we feel very fortunate that we were able to come out here this year and beat a fine Oregon football team that played really hard, played tough, and uh, we're very honored that we were able to play against people like that and be fortunate enough to win. I'm glad we won for Penn State, and I'm glad we won for the Big Ten, but more importantly, I thought it was a great college football game, and I think college football won today. Sounds like to me, Joe, that you believe in your heart that this is the best team in the country. Well, I think... Well, there are a few hundred, a few thousand people here who have voiced their opinion, Joe. Well, I, I think I'd have to agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, let's talk a little bit about the ball game, the things that surprised you in it. Well, nothing surprised me. I, I talked to Richie Brooks when we had our press conference. He asked me what was going to win it. I said defense and kicking will win it. It win any tough game when you had a team that plays defense as well as Oregon. And our defense played a great football game today under a lot of pressure. And our kicking game was outstanding. And uh, our offense, when, when they were being pressured, kept their poise. And we ended up playing a good, solid football game. Coach, you know a lot of people are going to ask you how you would feel about a national champ championship playoff. Well, I've always wanted a playoff. That's nothing new with me. I, I've, I've, I've always wanted a playoff. Well, Joe, that's terrific. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Okay, Sonny. Congratulations to Joe and his entire staff. Great University, Penn State. Final score, Nittany Lions 38, the Oregon Ducks 20. And you've got Florida State and Florida left to watch. So find a comfortable chair and enjoy. Good night from Pasadena.